Hello, hello. Is this thing on? Uh, if anybody's in the chat, can you let me know if you can hear me, please? Hello, hello. Hmm. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? I think there's a delay on my end too. Okay, cool. We got some people coming into the chat. Eduardo. Hello, Jacob Cisco. Hello, J11. Thank you for stopping by. Cool. We got some people coming into the stream now. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, okay, I'm still not getting any responses. Okay, so we've got one person saying they can hear me. Uh, can anyone else hear me? I just want to make sure that the microphone and camera are working. Also, yeah, can you see what's on stream right now, the camera and everything? I can see everything okay on my end. Just want to make sure that I don't have any technical difficulties before I get started. Okay, Eduardo says, yes, we can see your playmate in your hands. Okay, cool. That's all I wanted to make sure of. All right, well, uh, welcome everyone who has made it to the stream so far. And yes, finally, we have made it to the uh, World Championship Deck Sleeving stream. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get these in the shot. I have a bunch of dragon shields that I ordered. <laughs> Whoa, okay, we got a huge donation coming from J11, $49.99. Thanks so much. That is amazing. Thank you for the support. Yeah, that's definitely going into the sleeves fund. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. That's amazing. Yeah, here's all the sleeves. Oh, you can't really see them all on camera, but yeah, that's uh, 44 boxes of sleeves. Each box has 100 sleeves in them for a total of 4,400 to sleeve 4,320 cards. <laughs> so... Yeah, let's get into it. Oops. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to go in chronolog chronological order, sorry, starting from the year 2004 up until this most recent year, 2023. And our first deck is going to be the Swamper deck. Okay, well, let's go. I really don't know how long this stream is going to take, so... <laughs> if anybody wants to just kind of stick around for a bit and then, uh, you know, go take a break, that's totally fine by me, because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. But yeah, I'm going to be 
streaming as long as it takes until I finish. So uh, thanks for everyone who decides to join me, hang out, chat. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, uh, you know, just drop them in the chat. I'll, I'll be happy to answer anything you want to know about these cards um, or stuff like that. So 2004, uh, how old was I? I think I was like 15 or 16 years old when this deck was uh, printed. So I was in high school. I wasn't really playing competitive Pokemon at that time. Uh, I was still collecting though. And it's actually 2004 was not the first uh, world championship decks that I bought. I bought these way later. I think I got these around 20... 14 or 2015, so about 10 years later. Actually, the first World Championship deck that I ever bought is a 2005 deck. The Dark Tyranitar deck. And at the time, I didn't even know what these things were. I thought they were just normal Pokemon cards. It wasn't until that I looked at the back of them that I realized, oh, these are not real. <laughs> They're still cool, though. But Swampert, I don't... I haven't really featured this deck in the videos too much. I think I've only featured it once, right? Yeah, earlier this year against uh, Gardevoir. Eduardo asks, when did you start collecting the World Championship decks? Uh, 2005, like I said. That was the first time I ever bought a World Championship deck. I didn't really buy it to collect them. I just, I saw Dark Tyranitar and I thought, that looks cool. Dark Tyranitar is one of my favorite Pokemon. But I guess when I officially started really collecting all the retro decks was around 2010, 2011. That's when I decided, you know what? I need to go back and buy a bunch of these. And honestly, I'm glad I did because nowadays these decks are going for hundreds of dollars. It's insane how expensive they are. Yeah, back in the day, I just bought them on eBay. They were like 20 bucks, maybe 30. And nowadays, I think if you're lucky to find any of them, they're, they're going to cost you a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> So, yeah, that's around the time I started collecting them. Like I said, 20, 2011, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> J11 asks, how do those dragon sleeves compare to others like Titan Shield or Ultra Pro? I want to make sure my cards are protected from wear and tear. Yeah, these dragon shields are really good. They're really high quality. They're kind of pricier compared to the other ones. Actually, I don't know too much about Titan Shield because I've never used them, but they are a lot better than Ultra Pro. At least in my opinion. Some people have had issues with Dragon Shield in the past, but I haven't had any problems with them. Yeah, you know, like I said earlier, these uh, these boxes come with the uh, 100... I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, 100 uh, sleeves. So that'll sleeve up uh, a, one deck and then most of a second one. So if you buy two of these boxes, you can sleeve three decks with that. And I did make sure to buy all the same color, so they're all black. And I just hope that I don't get the decks confused later on, <laughs> because I'm not going to be able to tell which cards belong where. I really should um, make more 2004 decks. I haven't. I don't have a whole lot of um, homemade ones. I think I only have one, and that was the Team Aqua deck that I just made last year. But I do want to make more. I saw. I think it was a Vileplume EX deck that was 2004. I don't know if it was 2004, 2005, but I want to make a Vileplume EX deck. Vileplume is another one of my favorite Pokemon. And there's also a Team Aqua's Wall Rain deck that also looks like a lot of fun. I want to make that one. But the older cards from around that period of time, they're really expensive. And you know, I can't keep spending all my money on Pokemon cards, even though I want to. I got other bills to pay. Um, it's a lot of cards so far. I still have a lot left over. Yeah, I just realized that this is going to take me a lot longer than I was expecting. And the other issue that I kind of um, foresee happening is that once I slave the decks, obviously they're going to take up a lot more space in the 
in the box in, in my storage box. So I actually I, I don't think I have enough space for all these decks once they're fully sleeved. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to buy another deck um storage box after this. See, Eduardo asks, nice. Or he says, nice. I started to collect double uh, WC decks last year because I started to collect Pokemon cards in December 2022. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And then it'll be difficult to get WCS decks before 2016. Yeah, unfortunately, they are going to start to get really pricey for you. Especially the um, around this format right here, the Ruby Sapphire decks. Because uh, they have a lot of um, really popular Pokemon. like the, Especially at 2006, 2007, you have the Blastoise Lugia Steelix deck. And then there's also the Evolutions deck. Uh, those are really popular Pokemon, so they're super hard to get. And I think the last time I checked, the 2007... Oops. They keep sliding all over the place. 2007, the um, Absolutions deck with the Rayquaza EX on the on the front cover. I think it was going up for over $1,000, which is insane. I remember the day that I bought that one, actually. I went to an anime expo in Los Angeles, and uh, one of the vendors was selling it there for 15 bucks. So like, oh, yeah, I'll pick it up now. So I got it. That was around 2013, 2014, I think. J11 asks, do you have a go-to deck when you really want to win? <laughs> or a deck you just love playing with? Yeah, I do. Uh, 2007 is my favorite year. So a lot of the decks from 2007, I really enjoy playing. Um, my favorite deck is the Metagross Dragonite deck. It's not a, it didn't get printed as one of these. So I had to make it myself, but for the 2007 ones that was, that was printed, I really like the, um, the Flygon EX deck. It's, it has a Psychic type Flygon and the Grass type Flygon in the same deck. And also the Absolutions that I was just talking about. It has a, a bunch of the Eevee Evolutions, Absol, uh, and Rayquaza. So those are my some of my favorite decks to use. Now, as you guys have seen on my videos, I don't always win. <laughs> now that I think about it, every time I use like a Rayquaza-centric deck, I don't think I've ever won. I, I can't remember. I think I played the 2018 deck Rayquaza versus Malamar, I lost that one. And then 2013, Rayquaza versus Flareon, I lost that one. Uh, but let's see. A deck that I would say is, um, is probably the best of its year. I don't know, it's kind of hard to pick one, honestly. Probably 2008, the Gardevoir Galade deck. That one I think is undisputed the best deck of that of that year. It was crazy strong. You can use uh, up to two supporters per turn with the uh, Gardevoir's ability, telepass, um, shut down your opponent's poke powers with a psychic lock attack. Is that what it's called? I forget. <laughs> but yeah, we'll get to it in a bit. Two thousand eight. All right, cool. We finished the first deck. Two thousand four Swampert deck. Okay, on to deck number two. Okay, second deck we're doing is going to be the Gardevoir deck. This is the first time a Gardevoir was printed as a World Championship deck. It has two different forms, the, the regular one and the Gardevoir EX. And Gardevoir has consistently been one of the strongest Pokemon in the trading card game. Um, let's see. How many World Championship decks does it have? It's 2004, 2008, like I just said. And then again, 2010, 2017... And then last year, 2023, so it has at least five printings in the World Championships. I think it's the most of any of any Pokemon. I don't know if anybody uh, if anybody can correct me on that one if I'm wrong. Just let me know in the chat. But yeah, usually Gardevoir has like the strongest cards whenever it gets printed. 
Okay, so we did use 60 sleeves for the first deck. I've got 40 left, so I'm going to have to open a second box to finish sleeving this Gardevoir deck. Oh, Whimsicast in, is in the chat. Hey, Whimsicast. Uh, Whimsicast says, I think Mew has more, but it, it's not the star of all those decks. Hey, actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Mew does have a ton of printings as well. But in a lot of those times, it's usually used as, as a tech or as a like a support Pokemon. Uh, let's see. I think it's been the, the star of its own deck in 2006 in the Mew Trick deck. And then 2019 in the Mew 2 and Mew Tag Team deck. Um, I think that's it, right? I can't think of any other ones where it's the... Oh, and Mew VMAX, obviously. It got printed twice, 2022 and 2023. But I'm sure it has more printings than other decks. J11 asks, are you going to Worlds this year? No, I'm not going this year. It is too expensive to be traveling uh, three years in a row, because last year I went to uh, Yokohama, Japan. The year before that I went to London, England. And this year it's in Hawaii, and <laughs> I don't have enough money to travel again. Maybe if they bring it back to the mainland, like in uh, California or something. I hear that it might be in San Francisco. I don't know if it's going to be next year or in two years, but if it is back in San Francisco, yeah, I'd definitely go to that one because it's super close to me. Also, I do have some... Oh, J11 uh, donated another nine ninety nine. <laughs> Thanks so much for the donation. Are you going to Worlds now? <laughs> I don't know if 10 bucks is going to get me to Worlds, but you know what? I still appreciate it. If you want to pay for my ticket, I'll totally go. We need videos from, from those locations. Uh, I wish. Yeah, I've been to Hawaii uh, once for Worlds in 2012, and I did not do very well. <laughs> I was playing the Celebi Mewtwo Tornadoes deck. Uh, let's see. How did I do? I won two games and then I started I started losing, so I had to drop because it was it was just going terrible for me. I didn't really like that format, honestly, 2012. Too many Mewtwo decks. So if anybody has noticed that on the channel I don't really feature a whole lot of 2012, that's why. I just I personally don't like it all that much. It's just a lot of Mewtwo mirror uh, back and forth. Also, to be honest, I'm not too much of a fan of the 2008 format, too, because um, the decks are either you're you're playing Gardevoir or you have a deck that's designed to beat Gardevoir. Because most of the other... Actually, all the other decks have... Uh, what's that card called? Cessation Crystal to shut off uh, Gardevoir's abilities. Let's see. Whimsicast says, 2012 is certainly a format. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm excited to feature it on my channel. Though, since I haven't played the deck... Sorry, one of the words got cut off. I haven't played the decks in over a decade. Oh, okay. I do want to build the... Um, the the Chandelure deck from 2012 and the Mew Prime. That one does look like a lot of fun. I just... I don't have all the cards for that deck yet. I do have the Mew Primes, which I think one of, are one of the hardest ones to get. But I do need the, the promo Litwicks that you need. And a couple more of the Chandelure. But I think I have the rest of it, honestly. So, yeah, that'll be a, a fun deck to use because it doesn't feature Mewtwo. I just need to put it onto my shopping list and then I'll put it together one day. Hopefully by this year. Hey, Strike and Lycan is in the chat! <laughs> well, 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 Luke, who's live? Yeah, I'm live. I think the last time I was live was a year ago. It was also in April of last year when I was doing that uh, unboxing video. <laughs> okay, and then Whimsicast says, Litwicks for the Shandy Gore are very expensive. Yeah, I know. I've seen the price on uh, on eBay and, and TCG Player. I had to buy four Chandelure for 20, 2011 Heart of Gold Soul Silver through Noble Victories. They're all $20 now. Oh, yeah, that's gross. I don't know if I'll build 2012 Shandy Gore. 
I really want to make it. I really do. So I'm going to have to set some money aside to buy those Litwicks. Eduardo says, what do you enjoy most? Collect Pokemon cards or play Pokemon TCG? Honestly, I enjoy um, playing. I do have a pretty big collection of cards. But I prefer to, to play more than anything. I don't play competitively. I just don't have the, the time or resources because playing competitively nowadays, it's super expensive with all the traveling you have to do. But I do enjoy playing the older formats or just casual play, like at my local um, card shop. Uh, Strike and Lichen says, how many decks have you sleeved so far? This is my second one. I've only done one so far. <laughs> so you haven't missed a whole lot. We're still on 2004. Every year has four decks, and this is deck number two of twenty uh, of two thousand four. This can, the Gardevoir deck. The first one we sleeved was the uh, Swampert deck. Oh, and Strike and Lichen just became a member of the channel. You are now a Holland mentor. <laughs> Thanks so much, Strike and. It really means a lot to me, man. Oh, and we just finished using our first box of sleeves. That's one down. All right, we got forty three more to go. <laughs> This is going to be a long stream. Yeah, no kidding, man. What time is it? It's uh, it's 22 past the hour. We've only done one deck, so I'm definitely going to be here for a couple of hours. J11 says, who's your favorite Pokemon and why is it Charizard? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Charizard is in my top 10. Um, I don't know. You know, it's probably number three. I'm going to be honest with you. Number... Numbers one and two are obviously Pichu and Rayquaza. They're the channel mascots. But I, I would say probably Charizard is number three. I know I kind of rag on it a lot because it gets so much attention from the Pokemon company. But Charmander was the very first Pokemon I ever had from Pokemon Red back in the day. And yeah, I just... I uh, I can't I can't forget my, my original Pokemon. So Charizard is uh, my number three. <clears throat> Top 10 cards made. Um, what do you mean top 10 cards made? Like, <clears throat> like, what do I think are the top 10 cards in the trading card game or what? Uh, Eduardo says, what is your favorite Pokemon generation? Um, <clears throat> you know what? I that's kind, of a, that's kind of a tricky question for me because I think I have different answers. Depending on um, what region it's in, uh, what the games were, and what Pokemon were introduced. I would say for the region, um, Generation 2, because I love Johto. Johto has some of the best um, music in the game, uh, sorry, in the series. So I really like um, Generation 2 for that. For the best Pokemon, I would say Generation 3 from Ruby Sapphire, because it has um, my, my favorite one, Rayquaza. And just a lot of really cool designs in Generation 3. And in terms of the actual gameplay, I would say Generation 5 for Black and White. I think Black and White had probably the, the best games, um, story-wise, of all the games so far. Oh, Maria Hernandez just donated <laughs> $10. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you. That's so kind of you. Oh, I I missed a couple chats there. Strike and Like and says... Sorry, I meant Charizard in the top 10 cards made. Oh. <laughs> you know, honestly, Charizard EX right now, the, the, the Terrastal Dark type Charizard, is the, probably the best deck in the format right now. So finally, Charizard has a really good card all on its own. Gen 2 was great, and the fact that you can go to Kento was amazing. Yeah, I really want them to go back to Johto at some point. Eduardo says, I agree. Second generation has the best soundtrack. And then J11 says, can't be Gen 1. You know what? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm still a sucker for Generation 1, the original games. I have replayed those games more times than I can remember. It's gotten to the point that I can um, I can recreate the original um, Kanto map from memory. <laughs> I can't do that for most of the other regions. <clears throat> Honestly, I think I can beat Generation 1 in under a day. Like, start to finish. I have not played the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee games, though. 
I don't know. They just seem a little too different because you got to use like the Pokemon Go like catch mechanics. That seems a little weird to me. Strike and Lichen says, I think Soul Silver is my favorite game. Gen 2 plus quality of life improvements. And then <laughs> don't, they're garbage. Now you can't say that. Generation 1 is it's the reason why all of this exists. Because the first games were so popular. Um, you know, it kept the French franchise going. But you know what? Yeah, looking back on it, the original games did have a lot of flaws. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that. Gen 1 is great, but Let's Go games are terrible. Yeah, you know what? I, I don't, I'm not really planning on playing them anyway, so it's fine. Okay, cool. So we finished our second deck, the Gardevoir deck. Let me just put this one away. Oops. And I've also got a surprise for the stream. I've got a booster box. I'm going to be opening it on stream. So the way this is going to work is uh, I have 72 decks to sleeve. And uh, 36 packs in this box. So after I sleeve two decks, I'm going to be opening one pack. So by the time I finish sleeving all the decks, this box should be empty. <laughs> so first booster, booster pack, sorry. Let's see what we get. It's going to be the Raging Bolt pack. Let's see what I get. My code card. And all right, here we go. Uh, Wiglet, Meltan, C Dot, Totodile, Mist Energy, Sawsbuck, Cypher Maniac. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to save that aside. Sharpedo, that's the Reverse Hollow. Dunsparce, another Reverse Hollow. Oh, Gengar EX! All right. First booster pack. I got my first EX card. So, pretty good pack. Striken says, What are you looking for in the booster packs? Um. Nothing much. Actually, I got most of what I need from this set. So any of the, the staple cards are just going to be bonus for me, like the um, Iron Crown EX for the future box deck. Um, Raging Bolt for the well, Raging Bolt deck. I don't think it's going to be that good, but it looks like fun. Uh, Buddy Buddy Poffins are always good cards just to um, put in most of the decks. And I'm looking for, a, for an alternate art Walking Wake. Um, so that's, that's kind of my, my four main ones right now. I did good, said says, set the mist aside also. Oh, you know what? Yeah, good idea. Setting aside the mist energy. <laughs> Dresden. Hello. Okay, it says, yeah, walking wake. I'm, I'm going to be looking for that walking wake. I did good, says. Do you play much standard? Um, actually, I do, yeah. Um, every now and then on the weekends, I go to my local car shop and they have, uh, like tournaments that I compete in. I honestly don't do very well. <laughs> I think the last time I competed, I, uh, there was, I think it was like, um, 10 or 11 people. I came in sixth place. <laughs> I did pretty bad, but it was still a lot of fun. Like I said earlier, I'm not really that competitive. I just go for fun. Okay, let's go on to deck number three. It's going to be the Blaziken deck. This is uh, the runner-up deck in the Masters Division. It lost to Team Magma in the finals, so let's get into it. And actually, you know what? I want to showcase this deck again. It is super fun. I just don't know what to put it against. Strike and says, all right, I got to get going. Today is quite a busy day for me. Okay, take care, man. Thanks for stopping by. And yeah, I'm going to be here a while. So if you have a chance later on, you're always welcome to say hello again. <clears throat> okay, so deck number three. Um, we'll try. See ya. Okay, bye, Striking. This is actually also one of my favorite decks to use. It just has so many so many cool Pokemon in it. The main next trick that we just saw, Blaziken, is one of my favorite fire-type Pokemon. And, of course, you can't forget, it has the original Rayquaza EX in this deck. And fun fact, back in 2003, when the EX Dragon set came out, I attended the pre-release. And, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a tournament for that one. But they actually used to give out pretty good prizes in those tournaments. I came in second place 
in that tournament, and I got half a box. Uh, first place got a full box. And in that half box, I got a ton of the EX dragons. So I got uh, Latias EX, Latios EX, Altaria EX, Dragonite EX, and Rayquaza EX. I still have most of those, the Latias, Latios, and Rayquaza. The other two I traded or I gave them away. Okay, oh, we got a uh, new person joining the stream. That one sock. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Says, what's your favorite format to play in? Favorite format is um, a lot of the Ruby Sapphire formats, so 2004 through 2007. 2007 is my favorite one. Uh, 2006 is probably second place. 2004 is third place, and then 2005 is fourth place. I just love the original EX Pokemon mechanics, and the Delta species are my favorite mechanic to use. Oh, and then Whimsicast says, Blazik and deck is really cool. I can't afford the exit from the deck to build it, though. Yeah, they're super expensive. Hopefully one day you can get it, man. That'd be that'd be cool to watch on your on your channel. Also, by the way, Whimsicast, I have been enjoying the Sun and Moon through the Lost Thunder games you've been posting on your channel. <laughs> uh, J11 says, what's your most valuable card? And if you tell me it's one of the unsleeved deck... I'll lose it. <laughs> no, actually, it's not. Uh, it is a, um, a gold star uh, dark Charizard that I don't have in any deck. Um, where is it? I wonder if I can show it on stream. I think it's I think it's in, a, in another room. Hold on. I'm going to go grab it. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, oops, wrong page. Here we go. These two, I would say, are probably my some of my most valuable cards. The Crystal Charizard and the Gold Star Charizard. So, yeah, I don't really have a deck to put them in. Otherwise, if I could find a good use for them in a deck, I would totally use them. Although I have been thinking about putting this one into the uh, 2005 Dragonite Electro deck, but I don't know if it's going to be that good. Oof. All right, back to the sleeving. That one sock says, man, I wish they'd do a celebration set again to lower some of those EX era card prices. You know what? Yeah, I totally agree. If they did a, like a celebration set, Part two with some of the, the more playable cards from back in the day, I would totally be all in on that. J11 says, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I get these cards so I can play with them. I do have a Gold Star Rayquaza in my 2005 um, Zapdos Rayquaza Electric deck. Sorry, Electro deck. I don't think I've ever used that one in a in a channel video. I should probably do that soon. I did good, says. Have to agree, loving the some lot games. Whim Whimsicast just bought loads of staples for that format at EUIC so I can build more. Awesome, yeah. Are you, did you compete at EUIC? Whimsicast says, Jason Klasinski built an RS through PK deck with Drag Trode with the Charizard. I feel like I just did it because he could, though. <laughs> Yeah, that guy loves to show off. I have um, messaged with him back and forth a couple of times um, because he, I did it. Sorry, I do get a lot of my deck list ideas from his blog. So every now and then, I'll kind of ask him a question like, "Hey, do you think this card will be good in this format?" Uh, usually, my ideas aren't that good though. <laughs> J11 says, ever consider sending the really expensive ones to be graded? Uh, not really. I don't really care for graded cards. I'm not in it for like the the value of them, honestly. I just I, I really just like to play them. 
I don't know, maybe one day in the future, if I really need like a, a lot of money, I'll get it graded to maybe sell it, but I, I really doubt that. Yeah, whenever whenever I see people posting like graded cards online, I kind of ignore those. I don't really care for graded cards all that much. Especially if they're like super playable cards. Like, oh, why would you get that graded? Now you can't use it in a deck. <laughs> oh, Vanguard Metrics just joined the chat. Hello. When I saw your Twitter post about buying the sleeves, I thought you went overboard until I actually thought about it. <laughs> I admire your commitment. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I do have... A ton of cards to sleeve. This is actually deck number three so far out of 72. So we're going to be here a while. It's already been over 30 minutes. I got to pick up the pace. Whimsicast says, I saw someone grade a ton of the Diamond and Pearl play promos like Claydol and Roseanne. It made me very sad. Yeah, that's... Ah oh, man, I, I hate that. Why would you do that to Claydol? Those are so good to use in decks. Oh yeah, and this is my uh, Rayquaza. The first time I got this card as a kid, I was super excited. Like, oh my god, I'm totally going to keep this forever. <laughs> and I still have it to this day. Oh, you know what? I think it's actually in that same folder that I just had got. Hold on. There it is. Let me get some of these out. Yeah, my original Latios, Latios, and Rayquaza X that I bought, that I got in that uh, booster box way back in the day. I still have them. All right, I think most of this deck is already done. So after this is going to be the Team Magma deck, and that'll be the final one for 2004. I remember when the Team Aqua and Team Magma sets came out, I tried to build a Team Magma deck I think I was trying to use um, Team Magma's Agron. Uh, I couldn't get it to work, though, so I just kind of gave up on it. It wasn't until later that I saw the Japanese players were using um, Groudon with Claydol and uh, Camera. I thought, oh, such an obvious combo in retrospect. <laughs> you know, props to them. That was a really good deck. And I think they all three divisions uh, took the championship that year, right? That one sock says, how many decks do you have total? Uh, well, 72 of these World Championship decks. And then uh, homemade decks. Um, I think over 80, I think almost 90. So for a total of about 160 decks, I think. Yeah, I have a lot. And I still have some more cards coming in the mail Probably tomorrow to finish a couple more decks from 2019. I'm building the Fossil Rampardos deck and the Malamar Ultra Necrozma deck from 2019. Whimsicast says, The Agron seems super good. Frankly, Aqua's Wall Rain is also just really big and seemingly good too. Just had done by the big basics, unfortunately. Yeah, I know, right? Kyogre and Groudon kind of uh, overshadow them. J11 says, Will you be battling other streamers anytime soon? You know what? I'd like to. I did put a posting on Twitter a couple months ago if anybody wanted to do any collaborations. I did get some people saying they were interested, and we kind of started messaging back and forth, but uh, it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, so you know what? Since I'm live right now, if anybody uh, is a Pokemon streamer, if you want to do a retro battle with me at some point, <laughs> just let me know. Okay, it's deck number three complete. The Blazik NEX deck. Let me just put this one away. Mm. 
Okay. And now the Team Magma's Groudon deck that won the championship of 2004 in the Masters Division. Oops, hold on. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. My decks are falling over off camera. Okay. Let's get into this last one now. The Team Magma deck versus... Sorry, Team Magma versus Team Aqua battle that I had last year is still my favorite battle that we've um, had on the channel so far. It was so much fun, especially the ending. I didn't know which way it was going because... Um, I, I top decked. I don't know if anybody remembers that battle, but at some point towards the end, it, I had to like use um, actually this card right here, Maxi, to get a camera back into play. I didn't have this in my hand. I, I just managed to top the deck this card at the last second, and I thought, oh, cool, I, I got this battle because I can uh, get some more energy into play. But you know, it <laughs> it didn't do me any good. I still lost that one, but the the ending of that battle is still my favorite one. Although one of the most recent ones that we just had, the um, um, actually I think it was the most recent Pokemon one we had, the Gengar versus SP Toolbox deck. That was also a lot of fun. The Gengar deck can be a little annoying because of its fainting spell, Poke Power, but when you're the one using it, it's so much fun. <laughs> Oh, three reversals all in a row. Gotta shuffle this deck. Okay, I'm just about out of sleeves here. I gotta go into my next box pretty soon. And once I finish sleeving this deck, I can open booster pack number two. See what else we get. And what do you guys think? Which uh, which card should I pull from the from the booster packs? I do already have two Prime Catchers, so I don't need more. But you know what? I wouldn't say no to a third one. I don't have the the Master Ball or the Hero's Cape. Those are the, the last two Ace Specs that I need. And then I'll have the full set of them. Whimsicast says, pull the Eerie Secret Rare. It's my favorite card from the set. All right, we're going to try to get that one, Whimsicast. Got to get the Iron Crown Secret, uh, Secret Art. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's actually a really good one. That is a beautiful card. Have you guys seen the um, some of the new cards that were just recently announced in Japan? I think it was called the the Waking Whistle or something. Look at your the top five cards of your opponent's deck and any basic Pokemon you find there, you can put them onto your opponent's bench. That just seems broken for Snorlax decks, doesn't it? <laughs> Does Snorlax really need more support? Honestly, I'm glad that Snorlax didn't win the EUIC today. I think that would just, <laughs> that would just make me really sad. They hate the player base. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it seems like it. They really want Snorlax to be good. Yes, it needs more support. People keep counterattacking me. <laughs> I'm still winning against our counters. I just want I want to win more. <laughs> ah, you're you're that guy, huh, Whimsicast? I'll be sure to play all my switching cards against you. Mm. 
Ooh, how many more cards do we have? Okay, almost done with the Team Magma deck. <clears throat> Though, honestly, I don't really have a problem with uh, with Snorlax or Stall decks in general. Um, I think they're fine for, for the game. You just have to remember to, you know, just tech against them, especially as they get more popular. Because people don't really like teching against those cards because if you don't go up against a Snorlax deck, those are just dead cards in your deck. But, you know, that might just have to become the norm if Snorlax becomes more popular this year. Uh oh. Oh, these sleeves are slippery. Snorlax is... Ugh. <laughs> when it's stall decks. Actual attacking control is fun to play. Play as and against. Oh, you know, yeah, I have seen those uh, stall decks that run the Radiant Charizard. Those are actually pretty cool. I, I did enjoy seeing that. I was not expecting that to happen, to see a control deck actually take prizes. And done. We just finished our fourth deck, so we're done with 2004. Let me just put this one away real quick. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh-oh. I forgot four cards in the, in the storage box. All right, let me just get these sleeved up real quick. Then we'll be done. Desert Ruins. Unzacast says, you got to run at least some attacking stuff in stall nowadays. Otherwise, you can lose your opponent filling the bench with good guys on turn one. I run Luxray and Radzard. Yeah. Especially against, like, Lugia decks because all their Pokemon can attack. So stall wasn't, wouldn't really do anything against them. Vanguard Metric says, I like you move Grad onto the front. I do that with all my retro decks. Yeah. That way I can keep track of what the deck actually is. I think most... Retro players do that with their decks. Okay, that's deck number four done. Okay, let's go to booster pack number two. All right, let's see what we get in this one. Code card. And, all right, Bronzor, Mydiana. Duosian, Haunter. I really like that artwork. Oh, a Buddy Buddy Poffin. Nice. Setting that aside. Zero Aura. Sharpedo. Turtonator. Pikachu. Feraligator. And Water Energy. I think this Feraligator is actually a pretty fun card. Not really a competitive one, but it's fun to use. Okay, so we got a pretty good card in the Buddy Buddy Poffin. Now I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so let's go on to 2005 now. Starting off with a Dark Tyranitar deck. And now this is the very first uh, World Championship deck that I ever bought way back in 2005. So the story was, uh, I didn't know what these things were. I just saw like, hey, cool, it's a Tyranitar deck. I'm going to buy it. And then I opened it up and I saw like, wait, these aren't real Pokemon cards. But then I read like uh, the little uh, player manual that this is the replica of one of the top four decks that uh, won in the World Championship, and thought, oh, this is really cool. It's a really good idea, especially for uh, players that uh, want to practice some of these um, high-quality decks. So I don't know if you can tell, but these are really worn out because I've been playing with them since I was... Uh, how old was I? I think I was like 16 years old. I've been playing with them for almost 20 years now. <laughs> and yeah, they've got a lot of love on them. Also, this is not the correct Jirachi for this deck. It's supposed to be the other one, but you know what? It's fine. Whimsicast says, My first world deck was a Stalgon deck, but I have no idea what happened to it. Oh, that's not good. Did he lose the cards or what? That was uh, 2009, right? Yeah, I love these two Tyranitar cards. They have really cool artwork on them. 
I was also really happy when I saw that the this card was essentially being reprinted with the Devolution TM. I would like to make a remake of that uh, Rock Lock deck, but I don't know if we have the the right combination of cards to make a deck like that nowadays. <clears throat> My mother forced me to sell about half my deck collection. Half, sorry, half my collection back in the day. So it was just probably in that, but I can't be sure. Oh, no! <laughs> Why'd she force you to sell them? She just didn't want them in the house or what? Yeah, when I moved out of my parents' house, I left a lot of stuff behind. But you know, luckily, my parents kept all my old stuff. Actually, you know, recently... I went back to visit my parents back in um, during Christmas, and I found. Hold on, I have it here behind me. Oof. I found this thing, the bonus disc that came with the Jirachi. It's still sealed. I never opened this one, and I was really happy to see that my parents still had it. So, like, you know what? I'm taking this back home with me. I just, I wish I had the actual game though, because I really want to play it again. It's a really fun game. Uh, how's the music? Okay, we still got some more time on the music. I have a Pokemon YouTube music, sorry, music channel on YouTube playing behind me. Just making sure that it's uh, still got some time before I got to change the video. Can you guys hear the music or is it too loud? Let me know if it's too loud so I can turn down the volume. Let's see, there was a lull period in like 2010 during the Heart of Gold Soul Silver sets when I was into all kinds of different games at once and I was forced to get rid of stuff I didn't have space for in my closet. Oh no! Unfortunately, like 2,000 or so cards, mostly trainers gone. Oh no, that hurts to hear. That is a ton of cards gone. What other games were you into, into though? J11 says, you left stuff behind at your parents? <laughs> I wonder if they'll be having a garage sale soon. Oh, you know what? They better not. I think I brought most of my stuff with me, though. What the heck? I just noticed. It looks like uh, this Pidgey uh, has an ink smudge on it. Ah, that's fine. Yeah, if you could find my original Pokemon Gold at my parents' house, uh, can you hold on to it? To it for me <laughs> if they sell it at the garage sale. I never found that one. I still have my original Pokemon Red, but I lost my Pokemon Gold. I don't know what happened to it. I have my other ones, though. I still have uh, Sapphire, Fire Red, Emerald, um, and then the newer ones for the, for the DS. Vanguard Metric says, LOL, when I was a kid, we moved to a new house and I had a big box of toys and my Pokemon cards from, like, 2002 to 2008. My dad told me that if I wanted to keep it, I needed to put it in my room. I forgot and he threw it away. Oh no! Oh, that is so much stuff just thrown away. I'm sure there was a bunch of good cards in that collection too. When I was in the, uh, let's see, sixth grade, so around the year 2000, I took a bunch of my Pokemon cards to school uh, because, you know, we all did back in those days. And I was playing with some friends during lunch. And uh, while I wasn't looking, somebody stole all of my cards, like every single one of them. They just took them out of my backpack. And I was so sad when I came home. My mom saw me. She's like, are you okay? It was like, my Pokemon cards got stolen. <laughs> but you know what? I rebuilt. And now I'm stronger than ever. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay, we still got quite a few in this deck, and then we'll go on to the second one. I would say that uh, out of the Ruby Sapphire formats, I think 2005 is probably my least favorite one. Um, I don't know why. I just I don't enjoy it as much as the other ones. I think 2007, 6, and 4 are better than 2005. And then afterward in 2008, it was, um, 
it was the Diamond and Pearl era. Though it still did have a couple of the Ruby Sapphire cards. Okay, I think... Are we going to have enough sleeves? Okay, I think it should be the exact amount to finish this before we have to go into the next uh, box of sleeves. Uh, here's another problem I did not foresee. Um, by the end of this, there's going to be a ton of trash in here. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of empty boxes and wrappers. Um, I should have brought in a trash bag with me. Whimsicast says, 2005 doesn't stand out much. I feel like most of the 2005 decks survive in 2006. Uh, some really not... Really... Sorry, never really got the motivation to build 2005. Yeah. There was definitely a lull in 2005. But 2006 has some of the, the most fun decks, I would say, in, in that entire era. That's when the original version of the Meta Knight deck was uh, created. I do like the 2007 version of it, though. And what else? Of course, the Blast Toys Lugia Celex deck, the um, Drag Trode, Flariados, Rye Eggs, a lot of good decks in 2006. Oh, I'm just talking about all these, makes me want to play them again. Okay, almost done. Just a few more cards in here. All right, last one. All right, let me just make sure I didn't leave any behind. Okay, nope, it looks like that was all of them. So that is Dark Tyranitar done. Okay, next deck is going to be the Metachami X deck. And this one does have the correct Jirachi. I've actually been considering just buying more of these Jirachis from 2005 to switch out uh, the ones from the Tyranitar deck. But even these are really expensive. So we'll see if I actually get around to doing that. Okay. I've only got a few sleeves left in this box. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> And also a little fun fact, this Jirachi is kind of like the blueprint of all those uh, like little mythical Pokemon that have the ability. If they're in the active spot, look at like the top five or six cards of your deck. Pick one out and keep it in your hand. Uh, like we had another Jirachi like this around 2019 to, to 2020. Uh, search a trainer card from the top five cards. And then most recently we had the Mew from Celebrations. Um, pretty much the same thing. Look at the top six cards and keep an item card that you find there. So this Jirachi is the original one that did that. Okay, we're done with that box. Now let's go to the next box of sleeves. Oh man, what time is it? It's gonna be one o'clock and I'm still in 2005. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's uh, stuck with me through this first hour. So, yeah, this might take, I don't know, five, maybe six hours just to get through everything. Maybe even longer than that. I don't know. I really should have thought this out better. But you know what? I did say earlier that we're going to go until I'm done. So we're going to go until I'm done. And it's fine. I don't have to go into work tomorrow. I mean, I, I, I do work tomorrow, but... I can work from home, so <laughs> I don't have to go anywhere. I can, I can sleep in if I need to. Okay, 2005 Metacham deck. I think I've only showcased this deck also once, but I've, I've been planning on, um, on doing this 
um, a battle with this deck against the ZRE deck at some point. So you might be come, seeing that uh, battle coming up soon. I have also been thinking about doing a, a 2v2 format battle because that was legal back during the Ruby Sapphire and then Diamond and Pearl formats. I don't think it was ever officially used like in tournaments or anything, but it just seemed like a pretty interesting idea. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I do a 2v2 battle at some point? Uh, two, 2v2 battle, for those of you who don't know, you can have two active Pokemon and then four on your bench. Oops, uh, I don't have any more bench, but yeah. So two actives and then four on the bench. But only one of your actives can attack. So let's say I have these two. This one can attack, and I have to choose which of my opponent's Pokemon I want to attack into. Yes, says, I'm interested in the rules for doubles. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much the same as normal rules. Uh, the only difference is you have two active Pokemon, but only one of them can attack. And the same thing for your opponent. They have two, and they can only, only attack one of your active Pokemon. Unless the attack specifically says it can attack both of your opponent's active Pokemon. Would be cool to watch that. And Whimsicast says, Jirachi seems broken in doubles. <laughs> I know, right? Because you can leave one Jirachi active to use ability while the other Pokemon attacks. The one that I really want to try that with is um, Vile Plumy X. It has an ability. I forget what it's called, but if it's in the active spot, your opponent can't use trainer cards. So if you pair that with um, Gengar EX from that format, it has the Poltergeist attack. And Poltergeist, it does... I forget how much damage, but I think it does more damage for every trainer card your opponent has in their hand. So Vileplume to lock their trainer cards, and then Gengar to deal the damage. I did good, says. Sorry, mate. Got to bounce. But have a good rest of the stream. Hey, yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for stopping by. See you later. Take care. Yeah, a lot of the Pokemon that have abilities that only activate in the active spot would be really good in a doubles format. Because you don't have to worry about switching them out to get your attacker in. You can just leave them there while your attacker um, deals all the damage. But a lot of the decks back in the day were not constructed with that format in mind. So a lot of them wouldn't really work, I think. You have to specifically build them to be 2v2 um, format decks. Also, I would I would think that uh, what's it called? Special conditions wouldn't really be as strong because if you just put like one Pokemon to sleep or paralyze it, for example, you still have one more to to attack with. So you'd need to find a way to affect both of your opponent's active Pokemon with uh, status conditions for those kinds of strategies to you know be any good. Yes, says, doubles would be nice to see with four players. Not sure if it would be even possible. Um, I'm sure there's people that have kind of come up with home rules for a four-player battle. I've never done it myself, but you know, I'm pretty sure it exists. Actually, no, never mind. I, I lied. I have done that. <laughs> At, um, uh, when I was hanging out with some, some family members. And you know what? Actually, it was a lot of fun. But it wasn't like... Um, that we each had two active Pokemon. We each had one active, but we were just in teams of of two players. Whimsicast says, maybe something like Skuntag G's poison might be strong, but I feel like sleep and paralysis would be weak. Yeah, definitely would be. Because poison doesn't really stop the opposing player from attacking. It's just there to add more damage. So I think poison would still be fine. I would say that my my least favorite status condition is Confusion. Uh, it's just so no annoying to play against. Because you always have that 50-50 shot of hitting yourself with your own attack. I am glad, though, that they changed the rules around retreating when your Pokemon is confused. Because back in the day, you had to pay the retreat cost and then flip a coin. If you got Tails, 
you don't get the retreat, but you still discard your energy, which was <laughs> really annoying. But then they changed it, so you don't need the coin flip. You can just retreat normally, which I think was a really big upgrade. And what else? Uh, burn got changed recently too, right? Because it used to be if you were burned, you flipped a coin. If you got tails, you took 20 damage. But you would remain burned no matter what. <clears throat> Unless you healed it somehow. But nowadays, you take the 20 damage regardless. And then you flip a coin. If you get heads, uh, you get rid of the, the burn status. Okay, we just finished another deck. Okay, that is uh, six decks complete, so we can go on to pack number three now. All right, wish me luck. Let's see what we get. Code card, and we got Drillbur, Cutie Fly, Relor, <clears throat> Ponyta, Sandy Shocks, Hand Trimmer. Oh, that one's pretty good. I'm going to set that one aside. Rabska. I do like the ability on this one. It would be a lot stronger, th though, if it was on a basic Pokemon instead of a stage one. Snom. Cutie Fly. Macargo as our hollow rare. And the basic Grass Energy. All right. So I'm going to keep the Hand Trimmer aside. It's a pretty good card. <clears throat> we got Undefeated Maple Leafs. I've been trying to cleave into TCG tournaments. Would be pretty hype if he made a rap about Pokemon cards. That'd be cool, actually. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard a Pokemon TCG uh, rap. That would be in definitely interesting to hear, though. I do like um, Pokemon raps and like ciphers. I don't know if anybody's into that kind of thing, but there's this uh, YouTuber called Cam Steady who does really good Pokemon rap songs. If you guys have not heard him, uh, I would really recommend him. Cam Steady. Okay, next deck is going to be the Ludicolo deck. Have you not heard Jay Witt's Prophet rap before? Uh, I have not, but that sounds amazing. Okay, I gotta I gotta look that one up after I'm done here. <laughs> that sounds really funny. Shofu needs to rap about Pokemon cards. Oh, yeah, I know Shofu. He collaborates with Camp Steady every now and then, right? At least it, I think he does, or they. The, the name definitely sounds familiar. Okay, so this Ludicolo deck, I think I've only used it once. But it was one of my favorite videos just because I got to use the Mirror B theme song from Pokemon Coliseum. So if anybody has not heard of the Mirror B theme, uh, I would recommend it. <laughs> it is really funny. Especially if coming from a Pokemon game. Also, it's just a really good deck. Using the combination of Macargo and Ludicolo, you can pretty much search any deck you sorry, any card you want out of your deck. It's um a little more complicated than using Pidgeot by itself, but you know, it still gets the job done. Eel Crick says, love your channel, dude. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, I'm always happy to get more support on the channel. We're trying to get it to 2,000 subscribers by the end of this year. And you know what? I think we're making some pretty good progress. Um, just earlier today, actually, we reached... Um, 1,470, so we need 30 more to reach 1,500. So, yeah, as the channel gets uh, gets bigger, it's actually we're, we're getting more subscribers a lot faster because it took me about almost a year to get my first 100, which was painfully slow. There was a lot of points during that first year I thought, you know, I'm just going to... I'm just going to give this up because this channel's not going anywhere. Hardly anyone is watching it, but I kept it going. And then uh, after that, it, it got a lot easier to, to get more, more people watching it. And now we're on our way to 2,000 subs. 
So always appreciate the support. Thanks, everyone. J11 says, Camp Steady as Fire. His Blastoise with Charizard rap is awesome. Oh, yeah. I love that one. Honestly, and unironically, some of his rap songs are part of my um, my workout play playlist. The Mewtwo rap song is so amazingly good. <laughs> Yes says, you're doing a great job with the content. Oh, thanks, man. We do our best. Undefeated Maple Leaf says, is that really yes? I got myself a Dragonite after watching his vids. Yes, it's me. <laughs> oh, you're um, you're also a, a YouTuber? Oh, I did not know that. I'm sorry. What kind of uh, videos do you make? I'll have to remember to give you a subscribe once I'm done here. Okay, I'm almost out of slaves for this box, and we'll be going on to box number five. I still got quite a few cards left in this deck, though. I think Pokemon Battles of Older Gens and things. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Let's do it. I'll be sure to give you a sub. Wi-Fi Battle is always... Get yourself a dragon. <laughs> is that like your catchphrase? We also play the TCG game for Game Boy via Wi-Fi. Oh, nice. Yeah, I actually I started playing the the Game Boy game. I got an emulator version of it. I'm trying to build the original Haymaker deck, but you know what? Those those cards are so hard to find because the booster packs are, I don't know, they're so tedious to get because you only get two booster packs per battle. So it's pretty slow going. I'm trying to build the Haymaker deck and the Blast Toys deck. Okay, so we finished those sleeves. On to the next box. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, don't take him out of there. <laughs> Leave him in the box. Yeah, these uh, sleeves, like fresh out of the box, they're super slippery. So if I leave the, the deck like this, you see the cart sliding off. Oh, of course, now it's not doing it now that I'm talking about it. Ah, I see how it is. Okay, so we're just about done with this 2005 deck. And the next one is going to be the Nita Queen deck, which I believe is the one that won the Masters Division in 2005. <clears throat> I do want to build the 2006 version of Nita Queen, especially the one with the. It has Houndoom in it. That one looks like a lot of fun to use. Undefeated Maple Leaf says, do you do Yu-Gi-Oh! duels? Um, we did recently, um, last week on April Fool's Day, I posted a, a Yu-Gi-Oh! duel, mostly as a joke, honestly. But I, honestly, I also put in a ton of work into scripting that entire duel because it wasn't just like a like we do these normal Pokemon battles. It's just like a normal battle. That one was fully scripted. Like I, I had to purposely put every card in the exact right position in the deck so to draw it at the right time. It took forever. And then I had to do the voices for both of the characters. And yeah, I put in way more effort into the Yu-Gi-Oh! joke video than into my actual videos. Would be cool to see some content from you on the Game Boy game. Um, I don't know. I don't really do like video game streaming. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The music just ended. Let me just start up another one. There we go. Okay, we got some more music playing in the background. Yeah, he did the Yu-Gi-Oh! April Fool's special. It was epic. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I do vintage drunk duels. Oh, you mean like you do uh, like old school decks and stuff? That sounds like fun. And 
how do you do like the drinking rules? Like every time you take life point damage, you take a shot or what? <laughs> and then Yes says the voice acting was top notch. <laughs> uh, you know, I really appreciate you saying that. The Kaiba voice was, I think it was pretty bad. I cannot do a Kaiba impression, but I think my Joey impression was actually pretty good if I do say so myself. Okay, let's go on to the last one for 2005. Okay, here we go. The Needle Queen deck. No, we just kind of drink. <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes, right? So Needle Queen, really strong deck. But I do want to use the 2006 version of it. I might build it one day. Actually, what I might do is if I could find just the, another copy of, of this deck, I'll just buy it and then just modify it with some newer cards. That honestly might be cheaper than buying the individual cards from this era because some of them are pretty expensive. Okay. So after this one, we'll be done with 2005. I'll be opening another booster pack and then we'll be moving on to 2006. Pidgeot. Yeah, we got the original quick search Pidgeot here. This is not an EX. So this is actually really cool back in the day. It was actually easier to use because Back during this format, you can use Rare Candy on the first turn that the Pokemon was put into play. So you can just bench uh, Pidgey, Rare Candy, Pidgeot, and then start quick searching. So you didn't have to worry about getting your Pidgey potentially knocked out. Plus, when it was knocked out, you only gave up one prize instead of two, like you do nowadays. Whimsicast says, I almost got a copy of that Nidoqueen deck, but the listing on eBay didn't last until payday. Oh no! I'll have to see if I can even find them. I do have a couple of um, sealed 2007 decks, though. And I don't know. I don't really have a use for them right now. I was considering opening one of them because I want to get the, the Holland trainer cards, like the Transceiver, Mentor, um, what else, Adventure, all those cards. Because they're really hard to find. So I figured I could just open one of these decks and just use them as a skeleton to make another deck. But then I saw how much they're going for nowadays, and I thought, you know what, never mind. I'll just keep them sealed. <laughs> I don't want to buy them later on. AJ17 says, hi, Holland. Cool channel. We watch your videos all the time. Hey, thanks a lot. Always happy to hear that people enjoy my content. So what's been your favorite video so far? Actually, you know what? That, that, that can be a question for everybody. What has been everybody's uh, favorite video on the channel that you've seen? Or even recommendations, like what kind of videos or battles do you want to watch in the future? Though I do have a bit of a backlog on video requests that I'm still working through. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get this many, honestly. Love the 2010 content. Yeah, 2010 is a super popular format. Whimsicast can tell you all about that. He specializes in 2010. That and the sun and moon through Lost Thunder, right? Those are some of your favorite um, formats, at least from what I've seen. Uh, but for, for me, personally, I prefer playing in World Championship formats. That's why I never really got into the Sun and Moon through Lost Thunder one. I do like 2019 when I'm not using the tag teams because they just make the, the battles go way too quickly. So I'm actually looking forward to playing the 
Fossil Rampardo's deck pretty soon. Whimsicast says, I need to stop building 2010 decks. My addiction is getting out of hand. <laughs> yeah, I saw you have a ton of 2010 decks. Don't you? How many are you up to so far? You have like over 20 or 25, don't you? I think I saw a picture of you posting them on Twitter. Twenty-eight, yeah, that's nuts. Twenty-eight complete decks. I do want to build some more twenty ten decks, though. I do want to build that Hippowdon level X deck. That one looks like a lot of fun. And what else? I want to build the Ampharos um, Obama Snow deck. That one also looks like a lot of fun. But I want to build so many decks that like I split my focus, and then I just buy end up buying cards from like different formats, so then nothing gets completed. That's cool. Yeah, I know, right? I wish I had 28 decks from, from one format like that. Maybe one day I'll get there. Oh. All right. I think I'm almost done with this deck. Yeah, just a few more cards left. And then we'll be done with 2005. <clears throat> AJ17. I like the Greninja Break versus Giratina EX. Oh, nice, yeah. That was a while back, though, wasn't it? I think the most recent Greninja battle I did was Greninja versus uh, Trevenant Break, which was a pain to edit that one because every time I had to showcase one of the break cards on the on the chant on, on the video I have to rotate them and I gotta do it every single time I use them. <laughs> it made it even worse that both decks were using break cards. Likely David says do you double sleeves sorry double sleeve all your decks? No, I do not double sleeve all the decks. That would take forever. I have way too many decks to do that with. It was expensive enough just to buy sleeves just to just a single sleeve these. So to double sleeve them would be oh god, that'd be insane. I don't think I could handle that much. Okay, just one more card and then we'll be finishing up with the 2005. Provided I didn't forget any cards. Uh, nope, that was it. All right, so let's put Nita Queen on top. And we're done. Okay, so booster pack time. Likely David's. Oh, I requested that one from you. You did it. Oh, cool, yeah. And then I double sleeve mine, but I only have like four decks to manage. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, but that makes it a lot easier. I think I've I got over 160 decks. I don't know. I have to I have to count them to be short, but I'm if I'm not at 160 yet, I'm getting pretty close. Mainly just so I can play with the kids and not worry about spells. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. All right, here I go. Pikachu, Ghastly, LGM, Sizzlypede, Metagross. Roserade, Ex Excadrill, oh, Hero's Cape, yeah. I definitely needed that one, so we got our first Ace spec, or maybe our only one. I don't know if I'm going to be getting one or two from this box. Uh, Lycanroc, Drampa, and Basic Darkness Energy. Lubs M says, will you be doing any standard format anytime soon? Actually, you know what? Yeah, I have been considering doing a, a standard format battle because I do want to showcase... Um, the Charizard deck. I don't know what to battle against, though. Um, you know what? I'm open to suggestions. What should Charizard go up against in the standard format? The price of sleeves has been scaring me lately. All my 2010 pairs are worn out, so I'm going to spend a lot to replace them. Yeah, I hear you, man. These things were crazy expensive for all my decks. J4 says, Hello, Holland. I loved your videos. P.S. I just subscribed. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot for the support. 
And come on, Walking Wake. Oh, no, sorry. Still no Walking Wake. We'll get there. Don't worry. I saw a Japanese channel where they played Expanded. I felt, felt refreshing to see something different. I don't have any Expanded format decks. I mean, I'm sure I can make them. I have plenty of cards. I just never really got into Expanded, honestly. But I might... I don't know if people are interested. I might make a couple just to play a game or two, and we'll see how that goes. I... But I don't know anything about the standard format. Like, I don't know what decks are good or popular or what you, what cards to even use. So I don't know. Um, if you want to give me suggestions, I'm open to, to hearing them. Okay, let's go on to 2006 now. The Sun and Moon. Suns and Moon deck. So let's get started on this one. Lunatone and Soul Rock. This is one of the last decks that I ever bought because I don't know I was never really a fan of this deck because I, I saw it on paper and I thought this doesn't look all that good because you know I was comparing it to to Blast Toys and uh, and Mew and the Evolutions and then I saw this deck doesn't even run any X's like ah it's not that good but then I actually got it and started playing it like oh actually you know this is actually a, a lot better than I thought it was <laughs> so I'm bummed out that I spent so long on picking it up. J11 says, doesn't matter who Charizard faces, Charizard wins. Actually, you know what? It might because I don't know if you saw the the championship um, that just finished streaming earlier today. Charizard did win the international championship today. So I don't know if uh, if it keeps going at this pace. It, we might actually see Charizard win the world championships this year. Charizard and Xian Pao. You know what? Actually, that might be a pretty good matchup. Fire versus water. Though admittedly, Charizard is a dark type, so technically not a fire type. But it does use fire energy, so you know what? I'll count it. Whimsicast says, Right now, Lugia V-Star Dunk is really popular. Meloetta Genesect Fusion Strike is also popular and expanded. Reggie Drago is a good moderate pick. The meta seems to have a stalemate in abyss since TCGO closed. I have seen, I don't know if it's still popular, but I have seen the the Reggie deck using Skyfield because you fill up most of your bench with the Reggies, right? To use the Ancient Wisdom ability, and then you use the last couple of bench spaces to just power up your actual attacker. Subscribe right now to, hey, thanks a lot for the support. Really appreciate it. Also, while you're here, uh, make sure to subscribe to Whimsicast and Yes's channels. They're also Pokemon YouTubers. Whimsicast does a uh, also plays po retro Pokemon TCG that are really f fun. So make sure to check out his channels. Sorry, his videos. J Forces Blastoise is better than Charizard. Blastoise always wins. Uh, you know what? I would say that across the history of the trading card game, yeah, Blastoise has pretty much always beat Charizard. Even since the very first set, the base set Blastoise was way better than the base set Charizard. And then you had the Blastoise EX from 2006, so we're actually going to get to it in a little bit. And then Blastoise from um, from Black and White with Black Curum and Keldeo. Yeah, compared to Blastoise, Charizard has not had that much success in the trading card game. Uh, let's see. I played a lot of Reggies when it came out, but it was never very good into the meta and expanded. Okay. And Yes says, thanks. I appreciate you. And then Whimsicast also says, thanks for the shout -out. Yeah, of course, guys. Always happy to to spread the love to other Pokemon YouTubers. Uh, let's see. Who else does retro Pokemon TCG? Uh, Mount Moon TCG is another really good one that does consistent Pokemon um, videos. Um, Shuckle TCG. Shuckle TCG doesn't do battle videos, but they do a lot of uh, deck profiles and breakdowns and stuff like that. Um, who else? Whimsicast, do you know of any other Pokemon um, YouTubers that do retro? I can't think of any right now. Oh, and of course, Andrew Mahone, but you know everyone knows about Andrew Mahone. 
<clears throat> oh, why did I get the Blast Toys deck? I was supposed to get more sleeves. <laughs> I got I grabbed the wrong thing. Yeah, we're going to be getting to the Blast Toys Lugia Steelix deck pretty soon. One of my favorite decks of all time. was just recently, fairly recently featured on my channel going up against the Evolutions deck. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but you know, I, we actually had to play that game, I think like five or six times because I was never satisfied with how the battle came out. Like sometimes like the game was like way too heavily one-sided to one deck or the other. And I like the, the battles to be, you know, like pretty close and come down to the wire. So if um, if the battle is going like like one prize remaining to like five or six, like no, let's let's do another one. <laughs> this is not going to be a good battle video to to watch on YouTube. I like to make my games exciting. Wimsicast says I haven't watched any retro TCG lately, and a lot of the channels I did watch haven't uploaded, so I don't have anything uh, to add to the list. Okay, yeah, there. Aren't a whole lot of uh, retro TCG players. I think me, um, Whimsicast, and Mount Moon TCG are probably the most consistent ones. Honestly, I wish there were more because I know there's a, a lot of interest in retro TCG. I mean, you, you see them all over the place on Twitter and people play uh, tournaments like at major like regional tournaments and stuff, but they just don't, um, they don't post to YouTube. And I wish they did. That'd be really cool to see. Like, it'd be really cool to watch, uh, like, Jason Klasinski play a game of retro. I would honestly like to see a game of Jason Klasinski going up against Tord. I think they, they played in, uh, what, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, Jason hosted a retro tournament, like out in Florida, I think, and I, I'm pretty sure that Tord won it all. And I would have loved to see if they had um, streamed that battle. Tabletop TCG content is just a lot of work to produce, so I think it's hard to do it consistently for most people. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're totally right. It really is a lot of work. Um, and that, that's not even including like the video editing and just, you know, putting the, the content together. Because it's just hard to find people to actually play against. You know, I'm lucky that my wife really likes to play Pokemon here with me, so I, I already have someone <laughs> to play against. But even if you do find someone that is willing to play, not a lot of people, like, know how to play some of these older decks, so you have to, like, coach them and to even get a good game, you might have to play a couple times, like I said earlier. It's worth it, though. Yeah, you know what? I, I totally agree. I love doing these um, these battles. Actually, I started doing the battles because, uh, you know, I have all these decks, and I just I wasn't using them. When the channel first got started, it was I was just doing, like, top 10 videos because, you know, just I thought that'd be fun to make, but <laughs> nobody was watching them. And one day I decided, you know what? I'll just... I'll, I'll put up a battle to see if anybody likes it. And the first battle I ever posted was, um, what format? It was base set through Team Rocket. It was Mewtwo versus Wigglytuff, I think. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And then that one got like, it was super popular. It's still like one of my most popular videos on the channel. And I thought, oh, you know, people are really into this um, live battle content. And then after that, I did my currently most popular video on the channel it's the original blastoise versus venusaur battle and that one is still getting crazy amounts of views so i decided you know what i'm going to focus more on battles and less on the top 10 um videos and you know i think it's worked out really well for the channel i have a couple of friends that i'll start recording irl tcg because of you and others have inspired me oh you know what that's really cool to hear that uh, my content inspires you. You know what? I'm really looking forward to, to what battles you're going to be doing. Do you know what decks you're going to be uh, showcasing on your 
on your uh, video. Whimsicast says, the finding people to play is a, definitely a problem. The guy I usually record with doesn't like 2010, which explains why there's very little 2010 tabletop on my channel, despite my collection. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a bummer. That's surprising to hear, honestly, because 2010 is so popular, it's, it's hard to believe some people don't like it, right? All right, first 26... Sorry, 2006 deck is done. Hope you'll enjoy the content. Oh, yeah, for sure. I know I will. I'm always in into uh, retro Pokemon content. Okay, and here we go. It's probably my most heavily used deck. As you can see, these cards are really used. Look at that. The Blastoise and Lugia look okay, though, but that energy was messed up. This is actually the second deck that I ever bought. After I bought that original Dark Tyranitar deck from 2005, I didn't buy any other ones until the next year when I saw this, and I thought, okay, I'm definitely getting this deck, so I bought it. And I played the heck out of it. <clears throat> so now I'm finally getting it sleeved. AJ17 says, what's your favorite deck? Um, out of these world championship decks, um, you know what? I don't know. Let me, let me think about that one. From 2007, I do like the Absolutions deck. It's one of my favorite ones. I do like the Blazik and EX deck from 2004. What else do I like? Um, I don't know. I can't think of them off the top of my head. Let me, let me look through the, my decks over here real quick. Oh, you know what? 2011... Um, the Truth, that was created by Ross Coffin, is super fun to play. I like that one. I, I, it's really hard to choose. I don't know. I think as the as the stream goes on and I see more of these decks, I'll I'll point them out. But it's hard to pick them right now because I can't, I can't remember a lot of them off the top of my head. But my favorite non-World Championship deck is 2007 Meta Knight. I love that deck. It's so much fun. It has like a little bit of everything. Like it has the energy acceleration. It has draw power. And depending on what um, Gold Star Pokemon you use, you can uh, do a lot of spread damage. Like if you use the Gold Star Rayquaza, you can spread a ton of damage to your opponent's EX Pokemon. If you use Latios Gold Star, you can uh, pretty much do a one-hit KO against any EX, uh, sorry, Stage 2 Pokemon. It just has a lot of options, so I love the Meta Knight deck. Oops. What time is it? Oh, it's 1.38. It's almost been two hours, and I'm still in 2006. I think it's the most amount of talking I've done all at once. Okay, I gotta pick up the pace. I wanna be here all day. I'm gonna have to start turning on the lights pretty soon. Right now I'm just I, I have a window open next to me over there. I'm getting natural sunlight coming into the room. But if it gets starts getting darker, I'll have to turn on some lights in here. Oh, yeah, there's Latias Gold Star. So this one... Uh... Okay, yeah, this one hits EX Pokemon for 150 damage. And then there's also Latios Gold Star. That one hits Stage 2 Pokemon for 150 damage. That's the one that I'm currently using in my Meta Knight deck. So I have Latios Gold Star... And Delta Species Latios EX in that deck. Two different forms of Latios. I've also been thinking about adding in the Delta Species Dragonite EX, the grass type one. But that one's kind of expensive. So, and I haven't been able to pick it up yet. Oh yeah, this Lugia definitely has some creases on it. Like you can see one right there, that little white strip. And finally getting sleeved after almost 20 years. 
There you go. I really want to remake like the the Holland's Pokemon me mechanic, like the Magneton, the Cast Form, the Electrode, because you can count these as double Rainbow Energies. They have that special rule down here. That's kind of hard to see it, but yeah, you can count these as double Rainbow Energies. That would be really cool if they brought that mechanic back into the TCG nowadays. You can pretty much remake this Blastoise deck because you can combine it with the uh, Baxcalibur to accelerate the water energy, and then you can just pair it with pretty much any attacker you want. Creases our character for retro <laughs> Pokemon cards. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, they, they definitely have a lot of character to them. You can see the, all the, the, the use on these. I don't know what's wrong with this sleeve. Looks like it has like a hole poke through it right there. Oh well. I think the back is the back is fine. Okay, I can keep using it. And I'll have spares by the end of this, so if any of these sleeves rip or anything, I can just easily replace it. Oh, that one's really bad. Look at that. It's got a giant crease going down the side. Oh, here's the Steelix EX. Use the Mudslide attack to snipe anything for 100 damage. So you take out your opponent's Pidgeot so they don't have access to the quick search ability anymore. Or, you know, just hit whatever you want to take some quick prizes. For all the... Um, standard format players, if the Holland's uh, Magneton and Electrode did get reprinted in a way, what uh, what cards do you think would become viable nowadays? I'm thinking like it would be similar to this deck. You just, like I said, replace Blast Toys with Baxcalibur. Or you can actually even use it with Gardevoir EX, just um, get energy from the discard pile instead of, instead of from your hand. Oh, actually... Never mind, because that only works on psychic Pokemon, doesn't it? Never mind, never mind. But I don't know. I can't think of anything that might make use of it. I guess some dragon type Pokemon, because dragon type Pokemon always have like those different energy um, requirements for their attacks. Oops, there we go. Okay, just about done with the Blast Toys Lugia Steelix deck. And I think that's going to be deck number two for 06. So we can go on to the next booster pack after this. Oof. Few more cards. Yeah, three more. Oops, starting to slide over here. Hold still. And last card. Okay, it's another deck complete. Where's Lugia? Put Lugia on top. This one is done. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at my storage box over here. I'm definitely not going to have enough space for all these decks. Okay, well, I'll worry about that problem later. All right, next booster pack. Let's see what we get. Okay, remember, we're looking for Walking Wake. And we got Chatot, Cottony, Carvana, Ekans, Oratrice, Full Metal Lab, Golurk, Nuzleaf, Chargebug. Oh, Miraidon, nice. For the Iron Hands deck. Set that aside. 
Five real cardboard boxes are your best friend for retro deck storage. They can fit 45 Ultra Pro standard size deck boxes. Yeah, that's what I have over here. I got one of those next to me. But it already has some of my homemade decks in there, so I'm not going to be able to fit it with um, oops, with all these uh, WC decks. Uh, you know what? I probably should have bought one before I started doing this. Oh, well. Okay, next deck is the Evolutions deck. I believe this is the runner-up of 2006, right? It lost to Mutrick in the finals. And, yeah, I just uh, featured this deck going up against the Lugia deck that I just finished sleeving. It was a really fun battle. All right, here we go. This is also a really expensive deck because it has the original five evolutions as EX Pokemon. The lucky actually, luckily, I was able to buy two copies of this deck. So I have this one, and um, the other one I have uh, stored away somewhere else. I did open it though, so every now and then I'll go back and get some cards out of it to use for other decks. <clears throat> oh, my voice is starting to go. I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. Okay, there we go. That feels better. Oh, by the end of the stream, I'm going to be uh, without a voice. <clears throat> I don't know how gamers do it. Stream for like eight hours a day. That's insane. Okay, so... Next box. J11 says, what's your favorite Eevee Lucian? And do you think they'll ever give him more Evo types? I need a Dragon Eevee. Oh, you know what? A Dragon Eevee would be so cool to see. My favorite one is Espeon for sure. Um, but of the original three, Jolteon is my favorite one. So it's um, Espeon is number one. Jolteon. Umbreon. Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about the past top three. <laughs> Probably Sylveon. I really like Sylveon, actually. And then, I don't know. I do know that Flareon, for me, is last place. I'm not really a fan of Flareon. And, I don't know. I think Vaporeon and Glaceon are somewhere in the middle. I don't really... I don't really think about those two very much. <clears throat> Leafeon is pretty cool, though. I think Leafeon would be... What is that? Fourth? Fifth place? I lost count. <laughs> Flareon is cool. I mean, yeah. It's fine, but when you compete against the other ones... I don't know. To me, it just doesn't stand, stand out all that much. But I know that every evolution is somebody's favorite. So, you know what? I'm not going to badmouth any of them. another really cool Umbreon card. <clears throat> I wish that for the celebrations, instead of getting the Gold Star Umbreon reprint, I wish we got the Gold Star Espeon reprint. That would have been so much better. At least, you know, for me. Because <laughs> Umbreon's my... I mean, Espeon's my favorite. But you know what? I, I can't complain with... Uh, with Umbreon. I would say the shiny version of Umbreon is better than the shiny version of Espeon. Yeah, going back to, do I think that Eevee might get new forms? I don't know. I think that if they ever introduce like a new type, they might um, make an Eeveelution out of it just to kind of like showcase it, like they did with Umbreon with dark types came out, and then Sylveon with the fairy types came out. But I don't know. I don't think they'll do it for any of the existing ones anymore. It's been too long since we had a new Eevee evolution. The Umbreon Celebration reprint is at least cool because I got to show it to my brother. I had a real Umbreon, 
Oh, he had a real one? Oh, yeah, those things are super expensive nowadays. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the reprint. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the reprint one. I, I'm not going to try to go get one of the originals. That is way too much money, especially for a card that I'm never going to use. If I'm going to pay that much money for a card, I better use it in a deck. <laughs> AJ17 says, my favorite is Jolteon. Hey, you know what? You got good taste. Jolteon is my second favorite. But honestly, out of the ones in this deck, Jolteon is my favorite one. I think it has a better ability than, than Espeon. Espeon can de-evolve one of your opponent's Pokemon, but Jolteon can hit everything for 10 damage once it evolves. So it's a really good way to spread damage around. And it was actually used in a lot of decks, not just this one. I've been tempted to put Umbreon Star in a Honchkrow deck for 2008 just for fun. I mean, would it be good? I don't even know what Umbreon does, honestly. I i don't think I've ever really read its ability. Would it be a good addition to the deck? Or is it just going to be in there <laughs> just to show it off? <clears throat> Have we passed the Jolteon yet? I haven't really been paying attention. There's Espeon. <clears throat> No, I haven't seen Jolteon yet. We'll get to it eventually. Oh, giant Stump. This is the bane of my existence when I'm using my uh, Meta Knight deck and then somebody uses Giant Stump against me. It's so annoying because then i got to discard um, Dragonite or Meta Knight. Uh, sorry, Dragonite or Metagross on the bench because I can only have three bench Pokemon. I want to have my full bench. Umbreon discards a random card from your opponent's hand when played. The deck is a hand lock deck, so I can just punish your opponent escaping cessation crystal. Actually, you know what? That's actually that sounds like a pretty good idea. <clears throat> I haven't seen the Umbreon. Sorry, the the Honchcrow deck. Does it also run like um, what's that card called? Super Scoop Up to pick up your cards and recycle their effects. Where is the Jolteon? I haven't seen it yet. Is it in here? Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's coming up. It's leaving the best for last. Oh, I just realized I should have gotten a more comfortable chair. My back is starting to hurt. And let's see. It's been about two hours. I'll be here all night. It's all right. I haven't... We haven't recorded any new battle videos for the channel. So you know what? This this will count for that. <laughs> and there's my boy, Jolteon, Evolutionary Thunder. Hit everything on your opponent's side for 10 damage. Really good ability. <clears throat> Let's see. It doesn't run Super Scoop Up. It's more about using Team Galactic Mars and Haunch Crow and Absol's attack to hit their hand. Oh, okay, yeah. Absol is really good for that. Especially if you hit into one of the trainer cards, you get to discard a second one, right? I think that's how the attack works. It's been a while since I've seen it. All right. You know, let's put Jolty on top this time. Okay, now we're going to be going on to the final 2006. Uh, hold on, I forgot a card over here. There we go. Okay, so Mewtrick. This is the deck that won the World Championships of 2006 by Jason Klazinski. I think this is the first time he won a World Championship, if I remember correctly. So use Mew's ability to copy any attack on the field. So you copy the main extra disconnect, 
hit for 40 damage, and then your opponent can't use any trainer cards, um, except for supporters, during their next turn. So basically an item lock. And then it can also snipe the opponent's bench with Mainectric's second attack. It does have some other Pokemon in here to, uh, to be used as text, though. But main trick is the main one. Oh, hold on. I think the music stopped. Oh. There we go. The video was just paused. Oh, Battle Frontier was another really good stadium. It stops the... Uh, Abilities of any um, evolved colorless, dark, or metal type Pokemon. So, used to shut down Pidgeot's Quick Search ability. So, if this card got reprinted in today's format, it would do the exact same thing. It would shut off Pidgeot. Especially now that Path to the Peak has been rotated. But there's so many stadium cards also being used nowadays that I don't think um, I don't think this would last in play for too long, especially if people teched against it, because you can, like I said, just use another stadium to bounce it. Or, um, oh, what's that item card? I forgot its, it's name. Um, Lost Remover? Or no, Lost Vacuum. Lost Vacuum to just get rid of a stadium from play. So many cards, I'm forgetting their names. <clears throat> Honestly, sometimes it's hard to do these retro battles because I haven't seen some of their effects in so long. I kind of forget what they do. So that's like hundreds of cards to memorize their attacks and effects. <laughs> oh, yeah, here's an, one of the texts that I was talking about Regirock EX. Do 60 damage plus uh, 20 more, so you can hit for up to 80 damage. But you got to do 30 damage to yourself recoil. So just some big damage if you if you need to take a quick KO. But it doesn't come up all that often. And also, I think this is the first time that Mew. Um, was printed with the ability to copy other Pokemon's attacks. And then it just kind of became its gimmick after that. <clears throat> like nowadays, um, well, we just had the Mew VMAX that was just recently rotated out to have the ability to copy the attacks of other Fusion Strike Pokemon. And then we have the uh, new Mew EX. It can copy the, the attacks of your opponent's active Pokemon. But I think this is the first time that Mew could do that. Regirock is really good against Dark Tyranitar, Bomb Tar, which is considered the best 2006 deck nowadays. Oh, actually, you know what? I did not know that. Thanks for telling me that. I don't have Bomb Tar built. Because uh, I would need more Electro DX, and they're expensive. I do have some, but they're in my ZRE deck. But I might borrow them to to do a battle with uh, Bomb Tar. Actually, it sounds pretty interesting. I might do Bomb Tar versus Drag Trode in the 2006 format. So two dark decks going up against each other. That sounds like it would be fun. <clears throat> Favorite Reggie in the TCG? Uh, Reggie Alecki. Reggie Alecki for sure. But of the original three, I would say Reggie Ice was my favorite one. The first time they got revealed as new Pokemon, I don't know, I just thought they were kind of weird because they didn't follow the usual theme of legendary trio Pokemon. Like in the Generation 1, you had Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, right? So Ice, Fire, and Lightning. And then Generation 2, you had Suicune, Raikou, and Entei. So Water. Um, fire lightning, so kind of the same thing. But then for the Reggies, they went with ice, rock, and steel, which kind of threw me off. Like that doesn't seem right. But I don't know. I I, I grew to like them over time, and Reggie Ice was my favorite one. Blue is my favorite color, so 
if you're a blue Pokemon, you just automatically get bonus points from me. <laughs> oh, there's another Holland's Magneton. Again, counting as a double rainbow energy. So when you equip this to the Mew EX, it can pretty much use any attack because it can um, count as any energy type. So if your opponent has any good attacks on their side, you can just copy those. What about you, J4? What's your favorite Reggie? Oh, you said in the TCG. Oh, my bad, my bad. I think I meant just a general. Uh, favorite Reggie in the TCG? Um, Reggie Gigas Level X from the 2010 deck. That one's really fun to use. Use the ability Sacrifice, knock out one of your own Pokemon, heal 80 damage off itself, and then accelerate two energy cards from the discard pile onto itself. And also has a really good attack, uh, the Giga Blaster. Um, I forget. It's I think it's 100 damage, and then discard one card from your opponent's hand and discard the top card of their deck. Is that right, Whimsicast? I think that's right. Anyways, we got to go to the next box of sleeves. Wait, where did I put the deck away? My bad. I'm on autopilot right now. That's correct. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so my favorite Reggie in the TCG is Reggie Gigas Level X. And I also like that that deck also uses Reggie Ice. Because uh, you can use its ability to discard some cards from your hand. So you um, discard some energy cards and then get them back with Regigigas' ability. So just combining my favorite Reggie in the card game with my favorite Reggie overall. Oh, no, no my favorite overall is uh, Reggie Lecky, but it, it didn't exist back then, so it doesn't count for that format. <laughs> of the original three... Uh, Reggie Rock. Yeah, that's a pretty cool one, too. I do like the EX version of it, though. Ver um, what deck was it? It was around, I think, Generation 7. It had the ability. I forget what it's called. It gives your Fighting-type Pokemon plus 10 or 20 attack. I forget. It has something like that, right? Yes, says Holland. Been a great pleasure to sorry, been a pleasure to hang out, but I gotta go take care of some stuff. Keep up the good work and see you around. Hey, thanks a lot for stopping by. Okay, now we're done with the Mew deck. Okay, so we're done with 2006. Let's go to the next booster pack. Okay, let's see what we get for the next booster. All right, here we go. Meryl, Golette, Dunsparce, Snon, Keldeo, or as I call it, My Little Pony, Delmise, Electivire, Azumarill, Iron Valiant, that's our rare. Oh, wait, never mind. Walking Wake, we got it. <laughs> Not the right one, though. I wanted the alternate art, but it's okay. We got another Walking Wake. This is my third one so far. Cool. Walking Wake EX. I would say out of the three um, ancient EX Pokemon, Gouging Fire and Raging Bolt, this is probably the weakest one, but it is my favorite one, so I'm keeping it. <laughs> oh, J4 says, Mine is Reggie Alecki from Silver Tempest, but in general it's Reggie Drago. From the original three, it's Reggie Ice. Yeah. Same here. Reggie Alecki overall. Um, but Reggie Ice from the original three. Oof. Okay, now we're on to gener sorry, um 2007. One of my favorite decks of all time. Absolutions, so Absol Evolutions, that's where the deck name comes from. And my boy Rayquaza, if I could find him. Did I pass him? 
Oh, and also has a gold star Pokemon, Jolteon. There it is. Rayquaza EX. One of my favorite Rayquaza cards. This deck is super expensive if you want to get it nowadays. Nice. I'm getting a lot of nice in the chat. Yeah. Walking wake for the win. <laughs> All right. Next deck. Rayquaza EX. My favorite Pokemon. Well, tied for first alongside Pichu. Pichu doesn't have a whole lot of um, playable cards, unfortunately. It does have... Okay, the original Pichu from Neo Genesis was really good. And then in Heart Gold Soul Silver, um, it got made with the Playground Attack, was which was also pretty good. But then I think that was the last time we got a Pichu card in, in English, right? I know there's been some Japanese Pichu cards printed after that. But we need more Pichu cards. It's no fair. We got uh, Kalefa printed pretty recently, but no Pichu. We got to get Pichu back into the TCG. J11 says, don't you mean Rayquaza? No. It is Rayquaza, and you know it. <laughs> Though, to be fair, I did used to pronounce it Rayquaza before I heard its name like pronounced properly in the in the movie. I heard the, the character say Rayquaza. Like, Rayquaza? Is that how you say it? But then I thought about it, like, oh, I guess that's true, because its name is... Ray and Quasar. So yeah, Ray Quasar makes sense. <clears throat> but there are some Pokemon that the official translation just does not make sense to me. Like, like Cobalion. Apparently that's not the right way to say it. The correct way to say it is Cobalion. But the name comes from the word Cobalt. So why would you say Cobalion? Cobalion sounds like the right way to say it. So you know what? I don't care if it's technically incorrect. I'm going to keep calling it Cobalion. And what else? Reuniclus is another one that I apparently say wrong. I think the correct pronunciation is Reuniclus. That sounds weird. They put the Emphasis on like I mean the syllable on the no I said that wrong they put the emphasis on the weird syllable reuniclus that sounds weird to me I just say reuniclus I guess because it kind of sounds like the word reunion and what's another one that has a weird pronunciation. Um, Hippopotas. I say Hippopotas. Apparently the right way to say it is Hippopotas. Um, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> it's Hippopotas. Because it sounds more close to Hippopotamus, like the real animal. I'm going to keep calling it Rayquaza. Oh, that's messed up. You know what? You can, you can stop watching my videos then. I'm going to keep your money though. <laughs> Rayquaza. Rayquaza is wrong. And I refuse to call it that. Rayquaza. That's how you say it. <clears throat> I do like that this deck has two versions of Jolteon. And they kind of do similar things. Uh, this one does 10 damage to everything on the opponent's side. This one does 10 damage to both active Pokemon. So yours and your opponent. So just um, extra ways of adding damage to your opponent's side. Although, to be fair, I, I don't really like the shiny version of Jolteon. It looks kind of like a really weird shade of yellow, almost a green tint. I prefer the original color. J4 asks, what's your favorite Pokemon game? I'm currently playing Pokemon Sapphire. Uh, my favorite game is Platinum, followed by Hard Gold and Soul Silver. But yeah, Platinum is my my favorite overall. I mean, it, individually, it doesn't have like some of my favorite things. Like I said earlier, 
the Johto games have the best music. Black and White has the best story. But I think Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum just have like the most fun things to do. Like I really, I really like playing the underground. Um, kind of like part of the game. I would just spend hours in the underground just digging for like fossils and stuff. So when Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were announced, I was super excited. But then when I saw that it was just like almost a direct remake of the original with like hardly anything new added to it, I was really disappointed. I was hoping it would be kind of like Heart Gold Soul Silver or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire that, you know, just added a bunch of new stuff to the game. But yeah, I was I was not really impressed by Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, so I'd rather just play the original ones because I think they're just fine on their own. <clears throat> um, what else? Yeah, I think those are my top two. Platinum and then Heart Gold. And then after that, it's probably a tie between black and black and black and white and then black and white two. Because those are really good games. Whimsicast says, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl definitely disappointed me. The EXP share made me super overleveled the whole game, so it was just the original, but without any challenge. Yeah, you know what? I totally agree. I hate that you can't turn off the EXP share, because <clears throat> that makes the game way too easy. Unless you're just constantly switching new Pokemon into your team, but I don't like to do that. So if they ever do make some new remakes for like black and white, I really hope that they don't butcher it like they did for the Generation 4 games. J4 says, my favorite game is Fire Red. You know, actually, that's another really good example of a, a remake done well because they added a bunch of new content with the Sevi Islands. So I was kind of hoping that when they announced Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee that they would add the Sevi Islands content but they didn't, so that was kind of a bummer. But I guess it also makes sense because they only wanted to focus on the original 151 Pokemon, and the Sevi Islands had a bunch of the, the newer Pokemon added. <clears throat> Let's see. At least with Generation 4 games, we got the, the tie-in Legends Arceus, which was fun. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I, I kind of forgot about that one. Legends Arceus was super fun. I love that game, so I'm really looking forward to the new... Legends, uh, what's it called? The Z? Is that what it's called? I forgot the name. Legend Z from uh, Generation 6. EXP share is good but back in the day when only one Pokemon can use it. Oh, yeah, when you just uh, use it as a held item just to level up one Pokemon at a time. Yeah, I think that was more balanced. Instead of giving everything experience. I agree with Whimsicast. These new, these new kids will never know the struggle of having to level up each Pokemon by actually throwing it in battle. Oh, yeah. The original games back in the day. Oh, my God. When you have to throw in your Magikarp at the front of the, the party and then quickly switch it out just to get to evolve into a Gyarados. <laughs> that took forever. But you know what? It was worth it. Oh, all the Absol were together here. I gotta use this deck in another battle soon. You know what? I think I'll, I might do this deck against my Meta Knight deck, my two favorite decks of 2007 going up against each other. That would be super fun. I do remember back when I was a kid, I was playing Pokemon Red for the first time. I would always lose to the Elite Four because, you know, my, my Pokemon were, like, really underleveled. Because they got to, like, the level 60s by the end when you got to, like, go up against Lance. And my Pokemon were still, like, in level 40 or 50 or something. And it took me forever just going back and back, um, just fighting the Elite Four until I finally beat Lance. And I thought, finally, I beat the game. And then they tell you, oh, by the way, there's still one more guy you got to beat, the champion. And it's your rival. Like, oh, are you kidding me? 
I spent hours just getting to this point, and you're still telling me I got to fight one more guy, and it's the strongest one. <laughs> Freaking Gary Oak. But yeah, eventually I just kept on like, going back and forth just to level up my Pokemon. And the very first Pokemon I got to level 100 was my Charizard. So that made me really happy. <laughs> Okay, we got the next 2007 deck, the Empoleon deck. This one, I would say it's kind of like an anti-meta deck because it used a lot of the, where is it, Cessation Crystal? Used Cessation Crystal to turn off the uh, Poke Powers and Poke Bodies of your opponent's Pokemon. Well, actually, of any Pokemon. So you could shut off Mew, you could shut off all the EV evolutions, you could shut off Absol, you could shut off, uh, what was the other one? Um, Flygon, you could pretty much shut off anything using the Cessation Crystal. And plus Empoleon and Prinplup. Where's Prinplup? There it is. Empoleon and Prinplup were just really good of, uh, for spreading damage to your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it's a really good deck as an anti-meta deck in that year. See, Whimsicast says, it took me forever to beat the Platinum Elite Four back in the day, but the feeling of beating it was like no other. Yeah, you know what? I totally agree. That's how I felt when I finally beat the game um, in, uh, in the original Red version. I think I was like, I was 10 years old. That was the very first time I, I beat a Pokemon game, and I just like, oh my god, it's the best feeling ever. <laughs> I got addicted to Pokemon. Well, as you can see now, I'm a 35-year-old man and I'm still playing it. Where is my red version? Uh, I think it's somewhere back there. I can't get to it right now. The, this table is in the way, so I can't go to the, the back part of the room. <laughs> I wonder if I can angle the camera. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna angle my camera in a bit. Oh, that's all my sleeves. Oh no, I can't. I can't do it. Never mind. Didn't work out. I was gonna try to show all the um, I was gonna try to show all the um, the plushies and video games that I have back there against the back wall. But I couldn't uh, move the camera that far. I really want to build that Napoleon deck. I'm probably gonna go with Sugiyoshi Yamato's top four list. Oh yeah, that's the one that runs the one one line of Infernape, right? Yeah, that one looks like a lot of fun too. I like the Infernape tech in that version of the deck. I think in the um, in the World Championship booklet, I think it was um, it was misprinted to show Monferno instead of Fernape, Infernape, right? If I remember that correctly. You know what I, I noticed um, about the TCG is that the water type starters are usually the best ones. They get the best cards. Like Blastoise is probably the best of the original three. And then Feraligator had that really good um, Riptide deck in Generation 2. And then Swampert had that um, Swampert EX deck from 2004 that I slaved a little while ago. Uh, and now we have this Empoleon. And also there's a different Empoleon in 2008. Um, 2005 Samurott wasn't all that good, but then in 2000, sorry, in, in Generation 6, we had, um, Greninja, which was, which was really good, had the Greninja Break deck. Let's see. I don't own any of those booklets with 2007 World decks being so expensive, so I have to trust you on that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I remember seeing. I have the booklet here somewhere, um... I'm not going to find it, though. It's it's buried under all this stuff. I have so much Pokemon stuff in this room. It's ridiculous. Uh, Pokemon and Power Rangers, actually. Before Pokemon, I was super into the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That was kind of like my, my obsession as a kid. But then when Pokemon came out, I'm like, oh, no, Power Rangers is out. 
Pokemon is in. <laughs> but as I grew up, I kind of started to appreciate Power Rangers more and more again. So I started collecting the original Power Ranger Megazords. Actually, I have them right here next to me. Oof. Here's the the Green Ranger Dragon Zord. And the the Megazord is a little farther. I can't reach it from here. Whimsicast says, while well, Samurai wasn't super good, there was a deck in 2011 that played a 1-1 one, one Samurai line with in Reshi Flosion. Almost like a reverse logic of the Empoleon with the 1-1 one, one Fire line. Oh, you know what? I have seen. I have seen that as a tech. And actually, uh, back in 2011, one of my friends, he ended up going to Nationals that year. I think it was in Indiana. And he and um, some of our other um, group of friends, they kind of made this secret deck for Nationals using Samurott, um, Umbreon, and I forgot what other cards, but Umbreon had a really good attack that um, it dealt 30 damage and then it couldn't be damaged by Pokemon with uh, Poke Bodies or Poke Powers, I think. So it was really good, um, like anti meta. And then you would use the Samurott against the Fire type decks and against Dawn Fan. And I'm actually trying to recreate that deck. I'm, I asked my friend for the deck list, but he doesn't remember it. <laughs> So I'm going to try to reconstruct it from memory. <clears throat> oh, wait. I got the wrong thing. Not the next deck. I need more sleeves. I keep getting the wrong thing. <laughs> it got top four at that world, I think. Oh, the, the Samurai one? Yeah. So Samurai was good as a, like a tech... But it was never good enough to like hold its own deck. Though I did see um, recently, um, Mount Moon TCG did put out a a video. It was um, a for Alligator Prime Samurott deck. It was in tier one, but it was still pretty good. Um, it would, you know, obviously auto win against fire type decks because it's just pure water. But against everything else, I think it had a really tough time setting up. You know, if they ever reprinted this card nowadays, I think it would break the format. Attach it to your active Pokemon and shut off all abilities. So even better than Path to the Peak, because Path to the Peak only affected Pokemon with rule boxes. This thing affected everything. So you can use your abilities and then attach it to your active Pokemon to shut off your opponent's abilities. Samurai was a bit better in the Noble Victories format since for Alligator Prime was a lot scarier with Curium around. Samurai was more of a sideshow though. Yeah. <clears throat> I do remember seeing that, um, what was the deck called? I think it was called like Six Corners or something. It used a bunch of big basics, and Curum was one of them. I don't know. I, I don't remember too much of that format. Because once the EX Pokemon came out, um, everything that wasn't an EX kind of got shoved aside. So that was the year that Mewtwo and Darkrai came out and just kind of took over everything. But I did enjoy the format before the EXs were introduced. Kyurem is one of the best attackers in the format. Played, yeah, six corners. Yeah, that's what it's called. I liked her Prime decks as well as Gator Prime. Yeah, actually, I used to use the Electrode Prime deck back in the day. I also really like the. The VVV deck, Victini, Vileplume, and um, Vanillix. They just keep paralyzing your opponent. That one was a lot of fun. And Durant Mill. That one was super fun to play. <laughs> That's one of my, my favorite Mill decks of all time, Durant Mill. Yeah. 
And with that, we are done with the Empoleon deck of 2007. Okay, so that means we get to open up a new booster pack. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, starting off with uh, Turtwig, Puccina, Wiglet, Arbok, Shaman. Oh, another Cypher Maniacs code breaking. Vikavolt, <clears throat> Roly Coley, Heatmore, Relicanth, and Metal Energy. So Rel Relicanth is pretty good. Use a memory dive. All your evolved Pokemon can use the attacks of their previous forms. It's good in like um, just fun casual decks. I don't think there's a, a really good deck currently that can really take advantage of it. Okay, next deck is going to be the Flygon EX deck. Another one of my favorite ones. Has two different forms of uh, Flygon. Where's the other one? There it is. This one to accelerate energy with Delta Supply. And this one to hit for a lot of damage with Psychic Pulse. And then also spread damage with uh, Sand Damage. So here we go. What the heck? Well, we got our first bent sleeve. Okay, we can't use that one. I hope we don't get too many more of those. <clears throat> oh, it's almost been two and a half hours. Well, thanks for everyone who's uh, stopped by and checked it out thus far. Um, still a 2007 out of, well, we're going through 2023, so yeah, this is going to take a lot longer than I was expecting. If it goes on for too long, I might have to split this into two videos. I might just come back next weekend or something because this is taking way longer than I was expecting. I'm surprised that Stefan Fromm's Flygon deck wasn't printed that year. It played the Colorless EX. Yeah, I know. I actually, I love that deck. I really want to make it, but it's crazy expensive because you need, I think, what, three of those Flygon EX? I really, really want to make that one next. <clears throat> and I actually, oops, goes on this deck. I have most of the cards already, well, except for the, the Holland Transceivers. Those are expensive too. But if I need to, I do have a, a sealed version of this deck. I could just probably crack it open, take a bunch of the cards out, and I just have to put in the, the other Flygon EX. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I've kind of been thinking about doing that to see if it would be, it'd be cheaper to, to just buy all the, the real cards or to just open my, my sealed... Flygon deck and just use the cards from that. <clears throat> um, I think I have... I don't remember if I have two sealed or just one. I know I have three sealed decks. I have this one and the Empoleon deck. But I don't know if I have two of the Empoleons and one Flygon or two Flygons and one Empoleon. I gotta double check. Here's the Absol again. Really good for moving damage around. So spread damage with uh, the Flygon. Use Absol to move the damage around. Take some easy KOs. Sunday streamings until all 72 are sleeve. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a long time. <clears throat> if I had known it was going to take this long, I probably would have started earlier in the day. I don't know. For some reason, I thought that I'd be like halfway done. I was... I was naive. <laughs> oh, my favorite song just came on. I don't know if you guys can hear the music, but this is the the root um, root ten from Black and White. It's one of my favorite Pokemon songs.
Yeah, I love that part of the song. So I really like this one from uh, Gold and Silver. I like the Ecrutique City theme song, um, the Lake of Rage theme song, and a lot of the just like um, root songs in between. What else? The, the Ice Cavern theme. Generation 2 has some of the best Pokemon music. Aren't you hungry? Uh, actually, yeah, I'm starting to get a little hungry now. I've only had breakfast. I didn't have any lunch. Let's see. What would be the halfway point? Uh, I guess. What's half of 72? 36? Until I sleeve 36 decks, and then I'll, I'll call it a day for today, because this is going to take way too long. I might have to pick it up next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot of uh, laughing faces. I know. Yeah, I was not expecting it to take this long. But at least now I do have some sleeve decks I can use for battles coming up. How many decks have you done? I don't know. Let me count them. 14. 15. This is deck number 15 out of 72, and it's been two and a half hours. I do have some food I can snack on, but I don't want to, like, chew this close to the microphone because I, I know people don't like the sound of chewing, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. I might just turn off the mic and keep sleeping, but... Then I can't talk to you guys, so I don't know. Also, my back is hurting. I've been sitting on this really uncomfortable chair for the past two and a half hours. Mukbang? What? Mukbang? What is mukbang? I don't know what that means. <clears throat> Hall's going to pass out on top of the unsleeved decks. <laughs> I hope not. Oh, my God. Oh, I didn't point this card out earlier. Holland's Cast Forms. Probably one of the, the best Holland's Pokemon because it counts as a basic Pokemon with a really good attack, Delta Draw. If you have Delta Species Pokemon on your bench, draw up to that many cards. And it also counts as a double rainbow energy. And plus it comes from the set Holland Phantoms, which is where I got the name of the channel from. So this Holland's cast form is one of my favorite cards ever printed. <clears throat> dinner is not until four. <laughs> well, you hear that? I still have uh, an hour and a half until dinner. Mukbang is content genre where they eat food on video. Really? That's a thing? Oh, that's weird. Oh, I don't think I like that. <laughs> but, you know, I guess people are into anything. I know ASMR is also really popular, but I don't know. I never really got into that either. It just seems weird to me. Whimsicast, when you said mukbang, I thought you I thought you were talking about like a new like muck deck that I don't know about. <laughs> and we're done with the Flygon deck. Okay, so let me just put the Flygon EX on top. Where did I put it? There it is. <clears throat> another one done. And this is the last 2007 deck, the Bayonet EX. And fun fact, this uh, Bayonet was reprinted during um, the Sun and Moon era with almost like the exact um, same ability and attack. It just, you know, obviously got a it got upgraded to match the power creep of the game. And it also got printed as a World Championship deck of 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. Going to be needing some new sleeves pretty soon. I'm running out from this box. So 
So it is Baynat, use a shady move to move damage from your side to your opponent's side. Oh, you can only do one damage counter at a time. So you attach the rainbow energy, give yourself 10 damage, and then just move it away. And then Shadow Chant gets stronger the more supporters you have in the discard pile. And actually, now that I remember, this deck had one of my favorite moments on the on the channel during a video. It was playing against the... Um, what deck was it? Oh, actually, it was against that um, the Flygon deck that I just finished slaving. I was using this deck. My wife was using the Flygon deck, and I was doing pretty good. I was I was winning the game, but she had spread enough damage around that in one turn she took five prizes all at once. <laughs> it was insane. It was one of my favorite moments. Oh, let's see. The 2018 Bayonet deck is so fun, other than the fact that you can't ever play a Bayonet down against Zoroark. Yeah, that's true, because uh, it's weak to Dark-type Pokemon. I think it does run the Buzzwool, right? To help counter the Zoroark deck. But it... Yeah, if you don't draw into it at the right time, it doesn't do all that much. ASMR. <laughs> Want me to do ASMR? Hold on. I'll get a... I'll get an empty booster pack. Ah, oh, God, I felt weird on my ears. Never mind. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> oh, I did not like that. I'm wearing headphones right now. That did not feel good. I don't know why people are into that. I guess it triggers some kind of like reaction in your body. I don't know how it, how it works. I haven't read up about it. I just know that I don't like it. Okay, that one's done. New box. <clears throat> And then once this one is done, we'll be done with the 2007 decks. We can move on to 2008. Oh, and also I get to open another booster pack. <clears throat> so let's see if I get any more, uh, what are they called? Ace specs out of this box. I've got one so far, I got the Hero's Cape. It would be cool to get another Prime Catcher though, I'm just saying. I've enjoyed 08 so far, but the decks are very expensive, especially since I'm using mostly real cards. So I've only got three finished decks. Uh, which decks do you have completed? <clears throat> uh, the ones that I that I made myself are the um, I made the Garchomp deck, I made the Glaceon level X deck, and then the Mag Mortar slash Leafeon level X deck. But I do use a lot of proxies from the World Championship cards because they're just cheaper that way. <clears throat> but yeah, what I don't really like about the 2008 format is that most decks run uh, Cessation Crystal, which honestly just makes a lot of um, other kind of fun concept decks um, unviable. Like I used to have the Skittles deck using... Ho-Oh and Togekiss. But if Cessation Crystal is in play, you can't use Togekiss' ability. And it just kind of makes the deck kind of uh, useless. Let's see, Gardevoir, Blissey, and Torterra, Sceptile. Working on Empoleon, Bronzong. Eventually I'll do Bronzong, Ampharos, Garchomp, Haunch Haunchcrow, and Magmortar. Okay, yeah, so you got a pretty good list so far. What do you think of the Torterra, Sceptile deck? Is it any good, or... Like, how does it compare against, like, the other meta decks of the format, like Gardevoir? <clears throat> I 
deck is pretty cool. Sometimes struggles to set up, but it's a behemoth if it does set up. Oh, okay. Like one of those decks. It's got like a, a lot of uh, pieces to, to get into play. Kind of reminds me of, uh, I think it was 2015, the Primal Groudon deck. I mean, it doesn't have that many moving pieces, but it does take a while to get your Primal Groudon set up. But once you do, it's almost impossible to stop because it's got a ton of HP and it deals a ton of damage. I have failed three recordings that we did with the deck because the games had set up took out Blissey in three turns, but the games didn't set up, got logged by uh, logged hard by Cessation. Yeah, that's what I meant. Cessation Crystal is just so oppressive in that format that, I don't know, it kind of makes certain decks not fun to play. Like, even with, if you run, like, a lot of uh, Windstorm to get rid of the Cessation Crystal, I mean, you, don't, you can't always draw into it. And Cessation Crystal is so much easier to search at because you have Castaway to get it out of the deck. Oh, speaking of Castaway, there it is. The really good supporter card. Search your deck for uh, a tool card, a basic energy, and another supporter. So you can just chain them together. Use Castaway to search another Castaway, an energy, and whatever tool you need at the time. <clears throat> Okay, almost done with the Bayonet deck. Now we can move on to 2008. Oops. Cards are sliding all over the place. What am I listening to? What is this song? Oh, it's from Pokemon XY. I haven't played XY in a long time. I think I've only played it like two or three times, but that was back when the games came out, and I haven't replayed them since, so I don't remember most of the XY music. Okay, with that, we're done. Bayonet EX. So 2007 is now complete. Okay, next booster pack time. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Mudbray, Minchino, Rockruff, Litten, Cinchino. Ooh, that one's good. It's really good with Lugia. Set that aside. Future booster energy capsule. I have a ton of these already. Great Tusk. Oh, it's the wrong one. I needed the one that uh, mills. I only have two of them. I need some more. Pineco, Shiftry, Coridon. I got a bunch of these already, too. So I got Coridon and Miridon. All right, so I would say the best one out of here is Cinchino for the Lugia deck. <clears throat> All right, next deck. Scizor and Toxicroak. Pretty good anti-meta deck. You use Scizor, um, the first attack special blow. If the opponent's active Pokemon has any special energy cards, it can hit for 80 damage. So really good against uh, Pokemon that use double rainbow energy or um, someone called scramble energy. Hit them for a ton of damage with just one metal energy. There's another Castaway that I was talking about earlier. And of course, Cessation Crystal. You're going to be seeing a lot of Cessation Crystals in the 2008 decks. <clears throat> the Scissor Croak deck looks cool, but I'll probably not build it unless I find the full Worlds deck somewhere. Yeah, I'm honestly surprised how much the 
these decks have just shot up in price. Because it wasn't that long ago that they were, you could still find them online for, I don't know, maybe like, like 50 bucks at the most. But then they got like really expensive, like into the hundreds. I guess people really got into um, retro cards. I mean, sorry, retro decks pretty recently, especially during uh, you know COVID lockdowns. That's when Pokemon cards really shot up in price. Yeah, that was kind of a, a hard time to be a, a player because all the scalpers were just, you know, buying out entire inventories of Pokemon cards at, like, Target and stuff. So I would show up and there'd be, like, there'd be a line of people already waiting for the, for the Pokemon cards to be restocked. It was pretty sad to see. But then I was pretty happy to, to see later on when uh, they started printing more Pokemon cards. All the scalpers that you know bought out all the inventory, they couldn't get rid of all their stock, so they're just kind of stuck with it. I'm like, well, good. You deserve that. <laughs> you deserve what you got. I've been thankfully able to buy all the world decks I have for 130 or less, but still don't own many of the 2004 to 2008 ones. Oh yeah, those are going to be the harder ones to find. The Ruby Sapphire era ones. Because they go for a lot of money. <clears throat> yeah, I think the most I ever paid was um, yeah, 15 for that Absolutions deck. Like I said, I bought it at an anime expo. I think 10 years ago. So the jump in price just happened in under the um, under a decade. But nowadays when I buy the, the new decks, I always make sure to buy like multiples of them just in case I need some proxies out of them later on. And I'm kind of looking back and decide I want to make new decks for that year. thirds of the way done with this one. I still haven't bought the 2023 ones since I've been up to my knees with everyone reaching out to me to sell stuff that I I can't turn down. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I wish people would sell me stuff like that. <clears throat> then again, I don't really have a whole lot of money to be buying expensive cards like that. I mean, I've I spent a huge chunk of um, my money just on buying all these sleeves here. On top of all the other bills I have. Stupid adult responsibilities. Okay, just about done with this box of sleeves. Then we can go on to the next one. That's how I ended up buying 2010 decks in the last two months. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? That's actually a pretty good expense right there. 2010 decks are a lot of fun. Most are getting gutted for pieces, though. Yeah, I know, right? That's what uh, that's what I'm seeing nowadays when I go on eBay. I try to find like a bunch of um, bulk 2000, um, not uh, specific years, but um, world championship decks. Most of the good cards have been taken out. Like the EXs, Level Xs, and um, oh, Tropical Beaches. Those are super hard to find. <clears throat> Even a proxy 
Tropical Beach is going for like, what, 50 bucks nowadays? At least it was the last time I checked. It might have gone up in price. Uh oh, cards are sliding. Huh, that's weird. I have two cards left over, but I don't have any more sleeves. That's a weird number to land on. <clears throat> I did throw away a sleeve a little while ago because it was bent. Oh well, I should still have enough by the time I finish with everything. All the decks I bought besides Metagross are decks I already have completed in some way, so it makes sense just to split up the cards for other decks. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense, makes sense. I have a box in here somewhere that just has all my spare copies of the World Championship cards that I'm, I use for other, other decks. Okay, I just finished... Scizor Toxicrope deck. Hold on, let me put it aside. Okay, next one is going to be the Blissey deck. This one is a super easy deck to use. It literally only has one attacker, the Blissey. And the only other Pokemon in here, aside from Chansey, is a Chatot. I think I passed it a little while ago. Chatot. Um, just to help you draw some more cards with Mimic. The heck happened to the music? That was weird. But yeah, this is the only at attacker you use. It keeps getting stronger with Happy Chance. It does 10 da sorry, 20 damage plus 10 more damage for every energy on Blissey. But before it deals the damage, you can get it back a discarded energy and attach it. So it just keeps getting stronger as the game goes on. I'm looking at all the, the boxes of these dragon shields, and I'm not even done with the first box. Right, let me see if I can... I still have three more boxes in here before I move on to the next cases. <laughs> and it's taken me almost three hours. This is going to take forever. <clears throat> I mess up the camera. There we go. Nope. What happened? Okay. I wish you powered on in 2010 had cessation crystal so you could be as strong as Chansey. I don't know. I don't think cessation crystal needs to be reprinted. It is way too strong. Honestly, I think Cessation Crystal is kind of what ruins 2008 for me, because so many decks use it. Either that, or you're playing um, Gardevoir Gallade. Oh, there's Roseanne's research. Isn't that the, the name of your um, secondary Twitter account? It definitely doesn't need to be reprinted per se, but I would love to see Hippowdon. It was just a bit stronger. I've been cooking with new lists that's, that pretty consistently beats SP. Oh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, after all these years, people have um, found a lot of ways to beat the SP decks because... I would say back in the day, Lux Chomp was um, BDIF, but nowadays, probably Gardevoir Gallade. <clears throat> yeah, there's so many ways to beat SP. Though, admittedly, Lux Chomp is still my favorite deck of that year because that's the deck that I ran <laughs> during that format.
Oops. Here we go. I think the best overall deck is Dialga Chump. Personally, I'd be comfortable playing Karskar to any tournament because the only bad matchup is a Sable, Sable Lock deck. <clears throat> you know what? Yeah, actually, I forgot about Dialga Chump. It is a really good deck, too. It is a little hard to use, though, at least harder than, than Lux Chump because Lunch, Lux Chump just goes all in with just pure power. Dialga Chump is a little slower, more methodical, <clears throat> but it is a very good deck. <clears throat> oh, I need more water. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I think I'm getting a little faster at this. Yeah, I definitely should have started earlier in the day. But I didn't really want to compete with the EUIC stream. So not a lot of people were watching that one. Heck, I was watching that one. I was kind of hoping that Giratina would win. But, you know, Charizard is the best deck in format right now. I, don't know, I, I just think Giratina is more fun to play. There's more ways to use it. It's not just power up Charizard and attack. You can use, uh, you know, there's different attackers. You can use your Sableye, Cramorant. Uh, Comfey are really good to load up your loss zone. Charizard is just set of Pidgeot, attack with Charizard. Well, I guess it also has a Radiant Charizard nowadays, too. <clears throat> Have fun. <laughs> I've been having fun. What are you talking about? I'm almost done with my second 2008 deck. Yeah, speaking of the Charizard deck, I think for current format, I'm going to be showcasing a Charizard versus Chi and Pao battle pretty soon. I don't know, I'm getting a lot of uh, video ideas. I want to do the Meta Knight versus Absolutions battle. I want to do the ZRE versus Meta Chan battle. And I want to do the Charizard Chi and Pao battle. <clears throat> I also want to do a raid battle. I haven't done a, a raid format battle in a long time. Those are fun. The thing is, um, they don't really get a whole lot of views on the channel. So it's kind of not worth the effort if people aren't even watching them. But they're still fun to do. All right, and with that, we are done with Blissey, our second 2008. Uh, deck complete. There we go. Okay. Now, next booster pack time. Here we go. Let's see what we get. G4 says, I added the Zoroark V-Star combo to my Blastoise EX deck and called it Blastark. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. I remember that, yeah. Um, what's the attack called? The, the Zoroark one? You just put damage on your own Pokemon and it does more damage? Yeah, that was a lot of fun to use. Full art. Yeah, let's see what we get. So, starting off with C Dot. Totodile, Deerling, Pidav. Oh, Great Tusk. Yeah, this is the one. 
with the land collapse attack to mill your opponent's deck. Okay, I'm going to set that one aside for sure. Salvatore, Bronzong, Sizzlipede. Oops. Oh, Iron Leaves! Yes! Secret Rare! Oh, this is so good! Okay. I'm totally going to be using this in my anti-Charizard deck list. We got one, guys. We got one. And then the last two are Iron Valiant and Water Energy. Okay, those don't matter. This is what matters right here. We got one. I mean, it's not the Walking Wake, but it's still good. Okay, set that aside. And set this aside. That was a really good booster pack. I like that one. Oof. Okay, so, so far the hits, for those of you who haven't seen, I got the Gengar EX, Hero's Cape, Walking Wake EX, and Iron Leaves. The Secret Rare one. So I think it's going to be the Secret Rare for the box. I should really sleeve these. If only I had some sleeves laying around somewhere. Okay, next deck. All right, it's going to be another Empoleon. It's another good deck for um, sniping the bench with dual splash. Hit two of your opponent's bench Pokemon with, for 30 damage. Or use the Surf Together attack. The more um, bench Pokemon you have, the stronger it gets. You do have to be careful, though, because you can damage your own Pokemon with that attack. And, of course, you can't forget the Claydol, one of the best um, draw Pokemon in the entire game with Cosmic Power. Put up to two cards from your hand to the bottom of the deck and then draw until you have six cards in your hand. So it's a way better version of the Bibero that we have in the current format. J4 says, nice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a really good good card that I got there. <clears throat> Scramble Energy, another really good special energy card of the format, which got uh, reprinted nowadays. That's, uh, oh, I forget the name of it. What's the name of the, the new Scramble Energy nowadays? I can't believe I forgot. Pidgeot got reprinted. I think it's time Clay... I think it's uh, Claydol's turn to be re reprinted next. Yeah, you know what? I totally agree. That would be the best. And then you can play them together, Pidgeot and Claydol. It would be kind of like the deck that uh, Tord Reklev used for the finals today. He used Charizard with both uh, Bibarel and uh, Pidgeot. I don't know. I'm thinking about what other cards I would want to be reprinted. I kind of like the the Legends mechanic where you got like the two halves of the Pokemon and just put them together as your as your new Pokemon. And they tried to do that with the V Union, but I think that was getting four cards to make one Pokemon was a little too difficult. It was easier when it was just two. That would be a cool mechanic to go back to one day. <clears throat> and Delta Species are basically um, the new Terra Pokemon. But it would be cool if you, you can get a Terra Pokemon that aren't EX, like Delta Species were. Like, you can get any Pokemon Delta Species. It didn't have to be a fully evolved EX Pokemon. <clears throat> I'll call energy. This card is super expensive. Even just um, the World Championship version of it is pretty pricey. And a lot of the decks from around the time, you need like a full set of four of them because they're really good. Just um, instead of attacking, you can search your deck for two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. So they kind of reprinted this one as a capture energy. And you got to get one Pokemon out of the deck with it. So that'd be a cool one if they brought it back. It was just recently rotated out. For the first time in a long time, I have extra call energy because of the 2010 decks I built. Not cheap though. Yeah, no kidding. 
I think I only have um, I have two spare call energies. I need two more to have another complete set. But they're hard to find. Actually, I managed to find a Japanese one when I was in uh, Yokohama last year. I visited a bunch of card shops. And I picked up... Um, I only managed to find one of the call energies, but I did find a bunch of other good Japanese stuff. Oh, I really want to go back, back to Japan one day, but it was really expensive. I'm going to have to wait a couple of years before I get to, a chance to go back. Okay, that's another box done. Next box. And we are officially three hours in already. And we're still in 2008. Oops. I have a full set of Japanese call energy, which I use in the Torterra Sceptile as of now. Eventually, I'd love to have a full Japanese 2010 deck, though. Oh, actually, that'd be really cool. Oh, now you got me thinking about it. I should make an all-Japanese deck. I don't know which one I would make, though. Um, oh, you know what? Since we were talking about it earlier, the 2007 um, Flygon EX deck, the one that was used by Stefan Fromm, I might make that one in Japanese. Especially because the Japanese Flygon would be easy, um, cheaper to get than the English one. And hold on, hold on. I got to reset the music over here. There we go. We still got some background music. But yeah, the, that 2007. Flygon EX deck is definitely on my on my list of uh, decks to make. What else? I'm still trying to build 2019 Whimsicott GX and Porygon Z. I have the Whimsicott and the Porygon. I just don't have anything else. <clears throat> And what else? Um, Shandy Gore from 2012. I want to build that one. I don't know. I can't think of any off the top of my head that I want to build. I know there's a lot, though. I'm trying to build 2019 as well. I have pretty much every card I need besides the Porygon. Okay. Okay. Pretty much all the 2019 decks come down to me not having the Pokemon lines. Surprisingly, some of them are hard to find despite how, you know, how recent they are. <clears throat> <coughs> oh, I'm losing my voice there. Oh, another really cool Mew card. Mew Gold Star with the Mimicry attack. Um, once again, copy one of your opponent's attacks. You know what? Actually, I used to have this card, like the real version of it, and I traded it away. And like looking back on it now, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have done that because I, I don't even remember what I traded it for. But I know it wasn't worth it, especially because this card is so expensive nowadays. <clears throat> but actually, I think for me, in the 2019 format, what I'm missing are a lot of the... What are they called? A lot of the trainers, actually. I have a lot of the Pokemon... Because I just I bought them already, but it's the trainers that are that are hard to find, especially because during the the Sun and Moon era, I didn't buy like any Pokemon cards at all for like two or three years, and that was because I was a I was a graduate student working on my master's degree, and I just did not have any money to spend on Pokemon cards. I was not working during that time. I was just a full time student. So all my money had to go towards, you know, paying my rent and food. That was it. <laughs> okay, so we finish another 08 deck. <clears throat> it 
If you ever feel like organizing a trade for the trainers, I probably have extra. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'd totally be down. Uh, I think I actually have extras of the, the Porygon Z. Um, I don't know if I have extra of the, the basic Porygon, but I know I have extra Porygon Z if you want to trade for some of those. I'll have to lo let you know what, uh, what trainers I need. Okay, now we have the final 2008 deck, the Gardevoir. This is undoubtedly the best deck in format, and probably the best Gardevoir ever printed. Has a broken ability and a broken attack. With the ability, you can copy the effect of one of your opponent's supporters in the discard pile. So basically, you can use two supporters per turn, and Psychic Lock hits for pretty decent damage back in this format, and then your opponent can't use any Poke Powers during their turn. And then you combine it with the Scramble Energy, you can power it up in one turn, or even the Double Rainbow Energy, power it up in two turns. It's a really good card. <clears throat> and I believe this is uh, Jason Klasinski's second time winning the World Championship. Uh, yeah, Jason Klasinski. That's his signature right there. Sometimes it's kind of hard to read the signatures on these cards. A lot of people these days... Say, Empoleon Bronzling is better than Gardevoir. Haven't played enough to say either way, though. Really? I don't know. Then again, I, I haven't really played Empoleon Bronzling, but I would still argue that Gardevoir is better. But I don't know. If I get around to building the Bronzong deck one day, I'll have to try it out for myself. Oh, I just remembered another deck that I want to build. For 2010, I want to build the Obama Snow Ampharos deck. That one seems like a lot of fun. I love that Ampharos cards usually have the ability to just spread damage to your opponent. Like, one of my favorite ones is a Dark Ampharos from the Rock Lock deck. Whenever they evolve their Pokemon, it would take 20 damage. That was a really fun gimmick. <clears throat> Lake Boundary. Yeah, that was an interesting card back in the day. Apply weakness to each Pokemon as times two, which is weird nowadays, but for those of you that don't know, back in the day, during Diamond Pearl, I don't know if you can see it. Focus. Focus. Oh. Well, whatever. Uh, weakness was plus 10, plus 20, or plus 30 instead of the usual times two. Some Pokemon were times two, but not all of them, so you can use Lake Boundary to make every weakness times two. <clears throat> uh, the Gardevoir deck also ran this Jirachi EX so it had, had the Shield Beam attack which is basically the same thing as uh, Gardevoir's Psychic Lock attack it doesn't deal as much damage but it can still Power Lock the opponent for the turn Another clay doll. I really want there to be another like reprint of clay doll. That would be so good. <clears throat> Scramble energy, Curlia. Back when Curlia wasn't as good as it is now. You can just use Curlia nowadays just as your draw engine for the deck. With the refinement ability, it's so good. Oh, here's another really good card, the Dusknoir. I kind of forgot about this guy. Dark Palm. If your opponent has more than four, bench four or more bench Pokemon, choose one of them and shuffle it back into the deck. Super broken ability. Especially because you get to choose which Pokemon to shuffle away. It's a dust call, and it, 
Again, this is back in the era when you can use rare candy in the first turn. So you can just like surprise Dusknor out of nowhere. Just bench, rare candy, Dusknor, get rid of one of your bench Pokemon. Really good. Plus it had a pretty decent attack too. You can power it up in a single turn with the uh, scramble energy to deal some nice damage. To be fair to Curlias, both of the Diamond and Pearl Curly are good in their own right. I've lost games to the Platinum one, thanks to Hidden Run. Oh, okay. I've actually never used them for their attacks. They're just there to just evolve. <laughs> also, I want to say something about this deck that I really enjoy, is that it uses three Pokemon gimmicks all in one deck. You have the, the Gold Star with the Jolteon. You have the EX with Jirachi and Level X with the Gardevoir somewhere. I don't know, I just think that's really cool. You have three gimmicks all in one deck. <clears throat> There's the Gardevoir level X. As if the regular Gardevoir wasn't strong enough, this one gives it a new ability, a new attack, and more HP. And you also have the Galade as an alternate attacker for Curlia to evolve into. With Psychic Cut, you can pretty much take a one-hit KO against anything um, in the early game. There's more damage for every prize card that you flip up. So if you're still playing with six face-down prize cards, you can hit up to, what, 160 damage, I think? Which can pretty much one-hit KO anything. Keeping it cool... Says, what's up? Hey, what's up to you? We've been streaming for over three hours now. We're still on 2008. <laughs> so this is going to go on for a while. I've seen all your videos. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate that. Always happy to see some fans of the channel here. So you've seen all the videos. Um, do you have a favorite one so far? Just about done with uh, this deck. J4 says, three hours in, it's still going strong. <laughs> gotta sleeve them all. Yep, gotta sleeve them all. The original plan was to, to keep going until I finish, but now that I see how long it's taking, I might have to stop at some point and continue... Um, next Sunday because this is taking way too long. This keeps falling over. Hold still. And then well, we're almost done with the first case of dragon sleeves. Sorry, Dragon Shields. And then we still have three more cases to go through. <laughs> it's been three hours and I'm still not done with the first case. Well, then again, I did have four just loose boxes. So I guess I could count as finishing my first case. Okay, just a couple more cards here. Two more cards. One more card. And we're done. We're done with 2008. Finally, we can move on to 2009. Let me just put this one away. <clears throat> oh, we also got to open a booster pack. All right, next pack. Let's see what we get. All right, here we go. Shroomish, Lickitung, Slugma, Solosis, Del Caddy, Explorer's Guidance, Iron Hands, Turtwig, Croconaw, Mel Metal, it's going to be the rare of the pack, and uh, Grass Energy. This Turtwig would have been so much better if it had. Um, 70 HP, because then you can search it out with the Buddy Buddy Poffin. 
but it's a little too strong. <laughs> then you can use it with the Torterra EX. Okay, let's move on to 2009 now. First deck is going to be Gengar. Oh, J4 says, full art. Yeah, we didn't get one this time. Hopefully we get another one soon. Okay, the Gengar deck. It's really fun to play. Well, if you're the one using it. If you're playing against it, it's a little annoying with the fainting spell because it can automatically KO your Pokemon if you KO the Gengar first. <clears throat> Though the ability does not trigger if you knock it out with an effect with an effect, like if you place damage counters instead of dealing damage, or if you knock it out through like poison or something. But to kind of um, make up for that, the Gengar deck does have the Nido Queen to keep healing it between turns to negate poison damage. J11 says, come on, Dragon Shield, how about you sponsor Holland? Yeah, I know, right? That'd be so cool if they actually sponsored me for this. Um, they didn't. I have to pay for everything myself. <laughs> Whimsicast says, I've been playing 09 lately. Been a lot of fun. Very cheap since I've been using almost all Worlds cards. Yeah, it's actually a really fun format. I saw that you recently completed a uh, Lux, uh, Lux Ray Infernape deck, right? That was a lot of fun. That one in the Palkia Lock deck. The SP decks were really fun in 2009. Oh yeah, there was a Nita Queen that I was just talking about. Pokebody, Maternal Comfort. Between turns, remove one damage counter from each of your Pokemon. So just keep the Gengar alive, and when it finally gets KO'd, it has a 50-50 shot of KOing the opponent. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I need another box of slaves now. Oh, some dust on it. The SP decks feel a little unfair since I won a seven win streak with my uh, what's it custom SP box where the games that do last are fun. Oh yeah, they're super fun. I love SP. <clears throat> SP in 2009, I think, is more fun than SP in 2010. Because SP in 2010 is basically just use Garchomp. Like, almost every deck has a Garchomp. Because you can just keep healing with, um, what's it called, the Dragon Breath or something? Healing Breath ability. Or just snipe things with Dragon Rush. Yeah. I think Garchomp was a little too overpowered. <clears throat> That's why I prefer the SP decks in 2009 before Garchomp was released. Garchomp is really good, but if you're playing against good players, Garchomp will be punished at every turn so it gets complicated. Yeah, you're right. And uh, if you if you get to use like a high HP Pokemon, Garchomp can't really do anything to it because it's really good for sniping weaker Pokemon with 80 HP or less, but against like um, stage 2 decks that have been set up, it's kind of hard to stop them. Frankly, the scariest SP card is Ambipom G. Um, what does that one do? Is that the tail code one? I don't remember. I forgot what Ambipom does. Wait, I think it, it deals damage if you don't if the opponent's Pokemon doesn't have any energy on it or something like that. Oh man, I gotta remember what that does. <laughs> A 
Actually, I think I might be confusing Ambipom with uh, tail, the tail code on Apom. Yeah, it's tail code. Oh, okay, actually, I got it right. Completely dismantles all the big setup decks if they aren't careful. Also does 60 for DC if they don't have energy, so it dunks and KOs opposing guard chumps. Yeah. Okay, I, I did get it right. Tail code. <clears throat> I remember the Apom from, I forget what you said, from Heart Gold, Soul, Silver. Um, also has tail code, and I used it in my Mew um, Toolbox deck, the Mew Prime one. So you remove it from play using Mew's attack, and then just keep using tail code to move energy away from your opponent. It's a really no annoying deck to play against, but it takes a while to get set up. Also, I forgot to mention, this is a really good Ghastly card, Pitch Dark. Your opponent can't use any trainer cards, and it doesn't specify what kind of trainers, because back then it wasn't split up into like the tools or items like they are now, so it just as long as it wasn't a, wasn't a supporter, it would just shut it off. So I'm going to call energy. Broken Time Space. This is a really good card. I kind of wish this would get reprinted, but I don't know. I think if I were to reprint this card, I would give it an extra kind of like little caveat that the Pokemon that you're evolving into cannot be a, a rule box Pokemon because I think that would just be too strong. Like if you could just evolve into like a Charizard X turn one. <clears throat> so like, for example, in my, in my version, you can evolve into Charmeleon, but you have to wait until next turn to evolve into your EX Pokemon. I think that would be a good way of balancing it out. But I'm not a card designer, so I don't know. I might just be talking nonsense over here. <clears throat> okay, almost done with Gengar. One more card. Roseanne's Research. Okay, put Gengar on top, and that's another deck done. Alright, next deck is going to be Flygon Level X, one of my favorite decks to use. It is a setup deck, so it does take a, a while to get going because there's so many moving pe pieces to it. But once you get it going, it's so much fun to use. Let's see, I feel like BTS was, if BTS was reprinted now, it would be, we need to prevent it being used on Pokemon with abilities. Otherwise, the Vileplume Garboder kind of card could get ugly. Oh, you know what? You're right. That would be another good way of, um, <clears throat> of kind of like restricting its power. It can only evolve into Pokemon without abilities. And then that'd be a pretty good way to balance it out. Let's see, now I'm thinking, what Pokemon could take advantage of that? I guess the Bayonet EX is the one that comes to mind right now. It doesn't have any abilities, but it does have a pretty good attack with the Everlasting Darkness. You can evolve turn one and then just um, start item locking your opponent. <clears throat> I don't think it would be that bad because the attack only does 30 damage and Pokemon have like over 300 nowadays. So it shouldn't be too oppressive, right? Unless you find a way to like really increase your damage output like... Um, What's that card? Seismitoad, back in the day. Oops. 
more call energies, a staple of the format, Palkia level X. I think this would be a pretty cool card to reprint, at least the ability. Once per turn, basically both you and your opponent get a, uh, what's it called? Boss's Orders effect. You choose one of their, their bench to bring up and then they, um, they choose one of yours to bring up. That'd be pretty cool to see. Let's see. I love Seismitoad, but I'm not a fan of the formats it was part of. Feels like every game is over halfway through. Yeah, I was never really a fan of the Seismitoad. I think they made it too strong. It's a big basic, and you can attack turn one with uh, double colorless energy. I was, I don't know, I think that was a little too strong. <clears throat> and then you combine it with cards like the, the Crobat line to deal extra damage, or Hypnotoxic Laser. Uh, there, there's just too many things around it that made it too strong. Trap Pinch. This is a card that kind of held the deck together here. You would evolve Trap Pinch into Flygon, and then give Flygon a, where is it? The Memory Barrier. You can use the attacks of its um, previous forms. So you just use the Inviting Trap to bring up an opponent's bench Pokemon, or use Sand Tomb to just keep him stuck, um, unable to retreat. And if you have the level X um, Flygon, you can mill out their deck pretty quickly. Let's see, we're three and a half hours in already. Wow, that actually flew by pretty quickly. So once we're finished with uh, this deck, we'll be able to open up another booster pack. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to now, just the booster packs. I really want to get that walking wake. We already got one, and we already got our secret art rare, so I don't think we're going to be getting the one I want. But you know what? You never know. Or another prime catcher. That'd be cool to get. Let's see, prime catcher. What else was I looking for? Iron Crown EX. I was looking for more of those. I do want to build that Iron Hands deck. It looks like fun. I have the Ancient Box deck already built with the Coridon and the Roaring Moon. <clears throat> I think this year for the World Championships, we're going to be getting like a really good um, reprints coming out. It's been a pretty good format in my opinion. And I think we still have, is it one more set before the World Championships? I think it's right. It'll be the, um, what's it called? Twilight Masquerade set with the Ogre Pond and its different forms. Almost done. There we go. Slave got stuck for a while. Lubs asks, how many more decks to go? A lot. We're only on 2009. So how many would that be? So we got to go through 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, and then we didn't have worlds for 2020 or 2021. So 22 and 23. So we still have 
12 more years to go. Four decks per year. So that's 48 more decks. Did I do the math right? I don't know. That didn't seem right. I'm so tired. I can't do math right now. <laughs> I'm not a huge format of our sorry, not a huge fan of our format right now. But at least I'll be able to archive control in my deck collection if they keep giving me new toys. <laughs> yeah, that waking whistle for the Snorlax deck is gonna be really good for the for control. What parts of the format are you not a fan of? Oh, again, we're short one sleeve. That's weird. Alright, well. Go on to the next box. Done. And with that, we are done with the Flygon deck of 2009. Okay, so we get to open another booster pack and see what we get. All right, here we go. Pineco, Mawile, Meditate, Turtonator, Excadrill, Screamtail, Zero Aura, Rockruff, Mudsdale, Bramble Gas, and Darkness Energy. Okay. It wasn't the best, but you know, got another Bramble Gas. Pretty cool if you just want to play a little a fun little deck. Lubs B, sorry, Lubs M says, OMG, 48, good luck. I've been sleeving and documenting my whole collection as an ongoing project with some 4,000 cards. It was hard to find sleeves for, for wholesale price. Yeah, I know. Um, that's actually what I'm doing right now, 4,320 cards for all the decks. And Whimsicast says, whenever I play a non-control deck, I feel like a lot of the game comes down to matchups and opening luck. felt a lot different in the previous format where I could win any game with Gardevoir EX. I don't know, I kind of felt the opposite because with um, Battle VIP in the format, it kind of felt like it was luck-based depending on who opened Battle VIP. Okay, next deck is going to be the Lux Box deck. So a really fun SP deck of 2009. Here we go. Oh, and also, finally finish our first case. Oops, drop the box. SP radar, part of the SP engine. I think the SP engine is probably one of the strongest like search engines in the game's history. Up there with uh, the Holland search engine, you can use um, Cyrus's Conspiracy to search for another Cyrus for any of the um, Team Galactic um, invention cards like the Energy Gain or the, what's it called? SP radar. And the basic energy, and it just like fueled your deck just to, to go non stop. It was really good. I wish they would remake like one of these kind of search engines for the game again. That'd be a lot of fun to see. <clears throat> it's less around the context of Battle VIP Pass and more to do with decks like Lugia, Future Ancient, and Chien Pao being good, which demolish if you fall behind at all. I mean, yeah, I guess I, can, I I see that, yeah. It is really hard to come back once the 
like the big decks get going. Like if you fall like two or three prices behind, it's really hard to catch up again. Because it could just keep taking one hit KOs every turn until they win the game. I'm kind of hoping that as um, Scarlet and Violet sets keep getting released, we'll be getting more of the comeback mechanic cards, like the Counter Catcher or the... I keep forgetting the name of it. That Triple Rainbow Energy. What's it called again? The, if you're behind in prizes, it counts as three rainbows. Like if we get more stuff like that, I think that'll uh, help to make the game a little more balanced. <clears throat> what else? I do like that uh, A Specs came back into the game, but I don't know. I think that Prime Catcher might be a little too strong. I, I'm already not a fan of boss's orders. I've never been a fan of of those um, gusting cards with no drawback. Because, um, I don't know, they just make the games too easy for the person who draws into them. And then having a prime catcher that's an item card, not a supporter, pick one of your opponents and also switch your own attacker, that's just too good. So I'm hoping that at some point in the future, Boss's Orders finally gets rotated out of the format. That and um, Professor's Research. I'm also not really a fan of that card. So if we can get rid of those two cards, I think the game would be a little more fun to play. <clears throat> oh yeah, and here's the Cyrus's Conspiracy I was talking about earlier. You can just chain these together every... Every turn, just search out another Cyrus along with another trainer card and energy card and just keep chaining them together for four turns in a row. Just get whatever, whatever you need. Sliding over here. I am getting pretty close to the fourth hour. I've been doing this for almost four hours already. That's insane. <clears throat> Oops. Got two sleeves there by accident. I do like the combo between these two Pokemon. The Scun Tank and the Toxicroak. Poison Structure, if you have a Stadium in play, poisons both active Pokemon. And then Toxicroak, if the opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned, it does um, 60 damage. So basically it does 70 damage with, when you include the poison damage. So a fun little combo. You can easily power this guy up with one energy and an energy gain. Here's Dialga, the really strong attack, Deafen. You can use it for a one energy card if you use the energy gain with it. And your opponent can't use any trainer cards during their turn. I mean, the damage isn't that high, but the trainer lock is a really powerful ability. <clears throat> Power Spray is a really unique card. We haven't really had another card like this. You can play it during your opponent's turn. If they activate a uh, Poke Power, and if you have at least three... SP Pokemon in play, you can play it to negate their ability. So 
It's kind of like in Yu-Gi-Oh, if anybody plays Yu-Gi-Oh. It's kind of like, like activating a trap card. It's really cool. I wish we had more cards like that to let you interact during your opponent's turn. I think we've had a, an Alakazam that does the same thing. During your opponent's turn, if they activate a Poke Power, you can discard two cards to negate it during their turn. Yeah, I would like um, a card like that to be reprinted again. That'd be fun. All right, and with that, we are done with the next 2009 deck. That was Luxbox. <coughs> J11 says, is there a counter to those cards that make you shuffle your hand back into your deck? I've lost count a number of times my kids use cards like Iono. Eventually beat me. Teach me, Holland. <laughs> um, honestly, the, the best way, I mean, there's no way to stop them. Um, but there's a couple things you can do to kind of help protect your hand. Like if you have um, the Pokemon Barrel on your bench, if they get rid of your hand... You can just use Barrel during your turn to draw until you have five cards in hand. So it kind of uh, makes Iono kind of useless. Or if you know you're going to get iono on the following turn, you can use... Hold on, let me find it. The Cypher... What's it called? I know I pulled one a little while ago. The Cypher Code Breaking, something like that. Of course, now that I'm looking for it, I can't find it. What the heck? Where'd it go? Oh, here we go. This one. So this card, search your deck for two cards and put them on top of your deck. So if you know they're going to use Iono against you, um, you're going to automatically draw into whatever you put on top of the deck next turn. I don't know. That's kind of like my best advice. Bit Barrel or Cypher Maniac. But otherwise, yeah, you can't really stop it during their turn. Get Ionoed. Yeah, I know. That's the term that we use. I got Ionoed. I got Ionoed down to one card. Let's see, what other cards would be good counters for Iono? I guess just really anything, any Pokemon with abilities that let you draw more cards, like the Mew EX, you draw until you have three cards in your hand, or even Pidgeot EX, because you can just search your deck for whatever you need. So if you're down to just one card in your hand, if you have a Pidgeot EX, you can just search your deck for like Professor's Research and draw until you have seven again. So there's a couple of different Pokemon you can use. Oh yeah, so this Beedrill deck, actually pretty cool, has uh, the attack band attack, does 30 damage for every Beedrill on your side of the field. So if you're able to set up all four of your Beedrill, you're hitting for 120 damage for one energy card. But even if you can't get all four, just maybe getting like two or or three in play is like still a pretty good number, especially because you have um, what's it called Luxray in the deck, the Luxray level X. Use its ability to bring up one of your opponent's weaker Pokemon and just knock it out really quick. And yeah, this is the deck that won the World Championships in two thousand nine. Okay, I'm about to run out of sleeves in this box. I could open a, another box.
Oh yeah, this is the Lux Ray I was talking about. Bright Luck. When it levels up into its level X form, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the active Pokemon. <clears throat> There's the other type of Beedrill. This one, it's not really used to attack, but you can use the ability Flutter Wings. Once per turn, search your deck for a Grass-type Pokemon, so just search out the other Beedrills, or any of the Evolution line, like the Weedle or the Kakuna. And then you use Broken Time Space to evolve them all in one turn. Whimsicast says, I've got to head out, unfortunately, right before 2010 decks. But that was good hanging out while I worked on college work. Hey, yeah, no problem. Thanks for hanging out. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and also, yeah, like I said earlier, if you want to talk about trading for some of that 2019 stuff, you can just message me on Twitter, and we'll work something out. <laughs> All right. See you, Whimsicast. Yeah, there's the broken time space. Evolve Weedle into Kakuna into Beedrill, all in the same turn. A really good card. Oh, this deck also runs the Crobat. Use the ability Flashbite when, to, when it comes into the onto the bench. Deal 10 damage to any Pokemon on your opponent's side. So just a really quick way of uh, increasing your attack power for the turn. Plus you can recycle the Crobat abilities with the Poke turn. Pick it up back into your hand and just use it again. <clears throat> oh, that's it. This box is done. Now we can go on to the second case. Here we go. Wow. Almost four hours in. We're barely on the second case we still have three more to go. So if it took four hours for one case, and I have three more, the total live stream will be about 12 hours? Yeah, I don't think so. I need to go to sleep at some point. <laughs> so we're going to have to finish this next week. But let's see how many I can get done today. <clears throat> Uh, actually, hold on. So this is what the, the booster box is looking like. How about I just go until I finish the first half, and then I'll do the second half and the rest of the decks next week. I think that sounds good. J11 says, you need to eat at some point too. Yeah, I know. Getting hungry. But let's see, how many more boosters do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be 16 more decks to sleeve. Yeah, I think once I get once I get to that, I'll probably call it a day. So I really gotta start speeding up. I think I get to open another booster pack after this deck, right? I don't remember. <clears throat> I'm losing track. I'm slowly going insane over here. <laughs> I've been sleeping for almost four hours. Oh, but again, thanks for everyone who's joined me so far and stuck around for the past couple hours. I really appreciate everyone being here and chatting with me, keeping me some company. And yeah, we'll have to do this again next week. I'll probably do it on Saturday next week, though, not on Sunday. I couldn't do it yesterday because I, I was attending a, a Pokemon event. And also it was in the middle of the International Championship, and I, I wanted to watch that. All right, there we go. That's another deck complete. 2009 Beedrill deck. Put that one aside for now. <clears throat> and we can finally get started on the 2010 decks. For your health, maybe just finish the first decade of the 2000s and leave the rest for next week. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm doing all right. 
All right, let's open up another booster pack right now. Let's see, for six... How many did I say? 16 more decks? How many would that... How many years is that? That's uh, four more years, right? So I'd, I'd finish uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'll go until I finish 2013, and then I'll call it a day. <clears throat> I think I did the math right. All right, here we go. Next booster pack. Let's see what I get. Scyther, Skitty, Electabuzz. So I got two of the original Big Basics from the Haymaker deck. <laughs> Bramblin, Morty's Conviction, Shiftry, Bianca's Devotion, Ghastly, C Dot. Oh, Full Art, Explorer's Guidance. It's actually my second one. I already have one of these. But cool, I got another full art for the for the box. All right, so now we can get started on 2010. First deck is going to be the Guard of War deck. Just, I would say this is probably the strongest deck of the year. It's Kind of a remake of the 2008 version, just updated with some newer cards. All right, let's go. <clears throat> yeah, they reprinted Double Colorless Energy for this year, so just making Gardevoir even stronger. You can power it up in two turns. A Psychic Energy and a Double Colorless Energy. We still have the Dusk Noir with the Dark Palm ability. Get rid of one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Oh, I did get a new card, Spirit Tomb. This is a really good Spirit Tomb. It's used in a lot of decks in 2010, especially ones that need to evolve. Uh, as long as in the, it's in the active spot, nobody can use trainer cards, so good for a trainer locking. And also it has a really good attack, Darkness Grace. It's a free attack. Evolve one of your benched Pokemon. But then Spirit Tomb takes 10 damage for doing that. Um, still pretty good. Really good attack. Start evolving your Ralts and Curlias into Gardevoir. <clears throat> we have the Gallade again. The same one as before. Psychic Cut. Take a one hit KO against anything. Oh, yeah, it's about to be 4 o'clock. Oh, man. Dinner time is coming up. You know, how about this? I'm getting tired, and I'm getting really hungry. I think I'm just... Let me just do the four 2010 decks, and then I'll call it a day. Sorry for everyone who wanted to see more, but it's been four hours. I need a break. <laughs> I'll keep it going next week. Now that I think about it, this might have to be a three-week event, so... I'll do some more next week, and then I'll finish on the third week from from today. And if anybody wants to watch the full, unedited, uncut stream, I'll just I'll paste them all together. You can watch me sleeving cards for twelve hours straight. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you would, but yeah, I'll do it if anybody wants me to. I'll eat your tortas. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's my wife in the chat. She's going to eat my food. No, it's mine. <clears throat> also, I haven't talked about these uh, sleeve. I mean, sorry, these cards. The Heart Golden Soul Silver energy cards with the Pokemon silhouettes are my favorite cards. But they are so expensive, like crazy expensive. Like if you just want to get one energy card, it's like $10. So if you just want to get enough to make one deck, it'll cost you more than the rest of the cards combined. That's insane. But I was lucky enough to get the, the stamped ones 
like it has the they're holographic and it says I think play Pokemon on them. I have four sets of those that I had back in the day. And I am not using those in any deck. They are too uh, they're too valuable to be used. I think even for me, like I gotta draw the line somewhere. I'll use a gold star Charizard, but I won't use the shiny energies. J11 says, wow, those are nice. I know, right? Yeah, they're super cool. I think I have them here. Hold on. Oh. oh. Here we go, yeah. I got four sets of all of the energies in there. They're the stamped promo ones. There's those, and then on the other side, I have the dark metal and the double colorless energy. So yeah, I am not going to be using these on any deck. <laughs> also, just some random Pikachu cards. I like that one, the Build-A-Bear Pikachu. I got my Build-A-Bear. Uh, it's in the, the, the shelf behind the table over there. Some more call energies, also really expensive nowadays. Did you buy any of those individually? No, I did not buy them individually. Uh, back in the day, if you went to like one of those official Pokemon leagues or Pokemon events, um, and you had like a registered player number, they sent them to you by mail. So. I remember one day, I wasn't expecting them, one day I came home and I saw like some mail waiting for me from the Pokemon company. I'm like, what the heck is this? And I opened them up and it was like a pack of sleeves, like, I mean, a, a pack of energy cards. I was like, oh, cool. So I got a bunch of those. Actually, you know what? I still have some more that I haven't opened here beh behind me. Hold on. So this is still sealed, uh, but these are not the, the ones with the Pokemon silhouettes. Um... These are just big energy cards, but they're still, they still have the stamp and they're still hollow, have the hollow foil. And I have two of those that I haven't opened, but yeah, they're not as good as the other ones. Oh, I just realized this has a white card on the back. This doesn't. Almost done with the guard of our deck. Just a few more cards left to go. The small chip is actually really good against the SP decks because the major, uh, sorry, the majority of the SP decks didn't have any evolution cards, and Mod Chimp with its first attack takeout can just automatically KO any Pokemon that is not evolved. So no matter how much HP it has, Machamp can just automatically KO it, so it's really good against Luxray and Garchomp during that year. <clears throat> oh, there's another uh, Silhouette Pokemon. It has a pseudo Wudo. Shadow there. Okay, four more cards. We're almost done. Oh, I just saw the time. Yeah, it's been four hours so far. Four hours and we're still on 2010. But we finished the first deck of the year. Gardevoir. Okay, let me just put this one aside. All right, deck number two is going to be the Jump Bluff deck. Okay, I'm going to be needing some more sleeves pretty soon. I'm running out from this box. 
This one has the cool Celebi silhouette in the corner there. So Jump Bluff is a really fun deck to use. It's pretty easy to use, too. It just does 10 damage for every Pokemon in play. Like every Pokemon, including your opponent. So just load up your bench. And if your opponent also has a lot of bench Pokemon, you can hit for up to 120 damage for one energy. Plus, if you use some plus powers or the expert belt, you can give Jump Bluff some more attack power to take easy one-hit KOs. And speaking of plus power, there's one of them. And of course, you also use the Broken Time Space to evolve your Hopip into Skiploom and then Jump Bluff all in one turn. I don't remember what place this deck got. I think it was using the Junior Division, but I don't know if it was the Junior Champion or Runner Up or something. There we go. I do like the Jump Bluff cards, like ever since they first started coming out. Every Jump Bluff has, all their attacks are always worth just one energy. So they're really good for quick attacks. I really like the one from, um, I think it was Evolving Skies. It was a good strike. Jump Bluff, it has the ability to attack twice. If the attack needed one energy to hit for 60 damage. So if you attack twice, you're hitting for 120 damage for one energy. But also, the Rapid Strike Pokemon have different TMs to give them new attacks. So you can actually use a bunch of different attacks with uh, with a Jump Bluff and attack more than once. It's a pretty fun deck to use. I mean, it wasn't very good, but it was fun. <laughs> All right, next card. I mean, um, next box. Here we go. This way. Here we go. Oh, man, my back really hurts. I think for next week, I'm going to get a more comfortable chair. <laughs> I think for next week, I'm going to get a more comfortable chair. <laughs> I'm also going to have to get another storage box for all these decks because there's not going to be enough space for everything. I think this is the last year that Rare Candy can be used on the same turn as the Pokemon was put on the bench because I think starting the next year in 2011, the, <clears throat> the effect was changed. So you can only use them on Pokemon after they've been in play for one turn. So actually it got weaker. I do wish that that ability came back. That was a fun way to use Rare Candy back in the day. Oh, this is another really good card back in that format. Pokemon Collector. Search your deck for any three basic Pokemon. Add them to your hand. So most decks use like three or four of those. So they're kind of getting expensive too nowadays. Especially for people trying to make um, 2010 or 2011 decks. I think I have a couple of Pokemon Collectors lying around but not enough to make a full set. Here we go. Pokemon Communication, which I think is the first time we got Pokemon Communication. It's been reprinted a couple times. Let's see. 
only cards left. Okay, a couple cards left. And then we'll be done with our second 2010 deck. And then we'll have Gyarados and Lux Chomp left to go. And then after that, I'm going to call it a day. I am tired. It's been four hours. <clears throat> Here we go. Just a few more. I'm also starting to lose sunlight in the room. I don't know if you guys can notice it, but it's starting to get a little darker over here. The sun's moving to the other side of the house now, so I'm not getting a whole lot of sunlight. Okay, two more cards. I'm almost done. And last one, Baltoy. Done. Okay. Oops. Where did Jump Bluff go? There it is. Jump Bluff goes to the front. Put this deck away. Okay, and it's time for another booster pack. Okay, let's see what we get this time. So we've got one Prime Catcher. I'm sorry, not, uh, one Ace spec. My bad. One Ace spec, one Full Art, one Secret Art. Let's see what else is left in the, the box to get. Here we go. Metang. Oh, that's really good. The Metal Maker ability is really good for Metal-type decks. Save that aside. Carcoal. Model. Finizen. Sableye. Great Tusk. Oh, again, it's the wrong one. I need this one. Morty's Conviction, Deerling, Bronzor, Fluttermane. Okay, not bad. Yeah, I can use this in the Ancient Box deck. But the Matang was definitely a good pull. Set that aside. <clears throat> Next one is Gyarados, one of my favorite decks of all time. I kind of forgot about this one earlier when somebody asked me about my favorite decks. Gyarados, just attack for free with Tail Revenge. Load up your discard pile with Magikarp. It does 30 damage for every Magikarp in the discard. So you hit for 90 damage for free, which is insane. And then give it... Um, what's that card called? The Expert Belt. Give it 20 more HP and 20 more attack. Taking some easy KOs for no energies. I think Gyarados is one of the few Pokemon that can hit for a lot of damage for no energy. I think recently we just had that um, Electrode V, the Hisuian Electrode. I think that one could attack for free. It did, um, how much was it? Was it 50 or 100 damage for every special condition on your opponent? And then we also had, um, what was it called? Rhyperior Level X. Could attack for free. I think you discard the top five cards of your deck and then it does 50 damage for every Pokemon you discard or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, you would combine it with Mew Prime, remove the Rhyperior from play, and then Mew can copy its attacks and you can attack for free. It's actually another deck I want to build. It's like It seems like a lot of fun. But getting a bunch of Mew Prime is going to be really expensive. Especially since I want to use them for the Chandelure Exilgor deck. I only have four Mew Prime. I don't have a whole lot to use for other decks. Okay, so even though the Gyarados doesn't need any energy to attack, it does run some energy cards. It has Warp Energy and Cyclone Energy. You don't use them to attack, obviously, but you use them for their effects. Warp Energy acts as a switch, so you can switch your Gyarados out of the active spot, or anything else. If you need to promote your Gyarados, switch it out of the active spot. 
or Cyclone Energy. You can use it to make your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. So if they have nothing but weak Pokemon on their bench, you can use Cyclone Energy to make them switch their active and then take an easy KO with the Gyarados. Also, this Sableye is really good for the deck, especially if you start with it. With the ability, you can automatically go first and then you impersonate. You can copy the effect of any supporter from the deck. So you copy, actually, this one right here. Felicity's Drawing. Discard up to two cards and then draw uh, one card. Sorry, draw three cards if you discarded one or draw four cards if you discard two. So you use this to discard your Magikarp and draw some cards. And the more Magikarp you have in the discard pile, the stronger your Gyarados gets. And of course you have the Luxray level Lux, the really good inclusion in most decks of the format, honestly, just for the bright look ability. Bring up any Pokemon from your opponent's bench, and then Gyarados can knock it out. So this is really good in the formats before we have stuff like uh, Boss's Orders. So people have to get more creative when they wanted to bring up a bench Pokemon on their opponent's side. Mago says, you need a nap. Yeah, I know I do. I'm so tired. I can hear my voice going. I've been talking nonstop for four hours. You know what? I need another drink of water. Hold on. Okay. Just two more decks. I'm just going to finish this one, and then I'm going to do the Lux Chomp deck, and then I'm calling it a day. I am tired. And I'm hungry. <laughs> Four hours just to sleeve to 2010. I still got to go through 11 through 19. And then we're skipping 20 and 21. And then 22 and 23 are going to be the last ones. <clears throat> but you know what? I think we made some pretty good progress today. Oh, you know what? This is actually a really cool card for the gimmick that um, I haven't seen used um, ever since uh, Diamond Pearl. So I don't know if you can see, but this combi has uh, honey. So during this format, some Pokemon can have hold items, which weren't actually tool cards. It basically just acted as an ability, but you could not um, shut it off. So with this combi, once it goes to the bench, you can get back one of your discarded Pokemon and put it onto the bench as well. So if one of your Gyarados gets KO'd, use Combi, put it on the bench, get back a Magikarp, and then evolve it into another Gyarados. J11 says, Holland sounding kind of horsey. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I'm going to need to drink some tea after this. I am losing my voice. <laughs> Can you imagine if I decided to keep it going until I finished? Uh, I would not not have a voice <laughs> by the end of it. I don't even talk this much at work. So if I were at work right now, this would be half of my shift. <laughs> Four hours. I wanted to record a, a battle tonight, but you know what? I don't think it's going to happen. I'm too tired. And honestly, I don't want to move this camera setup right now. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a battle on another day. You'd be doing the stream in sign language. Yeah, I know, right? Actually, I don't know a whole lot of sign language. I know the alphabet, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. <laughs> I know some letters. I don't know any actual words in sign language. I took a sign language class back in college, and I don't remember, like, any of it. <clears throat> Okay, just a few more cards, and I'm almost done with this deck. Okay, last one. Pokemon Collector. And we're done with Gyarados. Put it to the front. That's another deck complete. Okay, I'm just going to do one more.
Okay. Saving my favorite one of 2010 for last. This was the deck that I used back in the day. Lux Chomp. So, yeah. Back in the day, this was considered to be the strongest deck of the format. But nowadays, I think with people you know, just getting more practice and building better decks, I think it's kind of gone down a little, but it's still really good. Yeah, we just finished with another box of slates. Yeah, that one's empty. New box. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now, after this one, I'm going to open up one more booster pack, and then I'll call it a day. I think the music is about to run out, too, behind me. Hold on. Oh, never mind. Music's still going. There's Luxray, of course. Half of the, the name of the Lux Chomp, the other one, Guard Chomp, obviously. Really good cards. You use Luxray to bring up damaged Pokemon and knock them out. Or you use Guard Chomp to just hit them on the bench with Dragon Rush. <clears throat> Again, using the SP engine with the Cyrus's Conspiracy. Use Energy Gain, attach it to either the Luxray or the Garchomp, and then power them up in one turn with the Lightning Energy for Luxray or the Double Colorless Energy for the Garchomp. You can see level X is a really good card too. Mostly used for the ability trade off. Once per turn, look at the top two cards of your deck. Keep one, put the other one at the bottom of the deck. But also has a pretty decent attack. Zen Blade. Give it a double colorless energy. You can hit for 60 damage. And that ability has been reprinted once with the Pidgeotto. I think what it was called. I think it was called Airmail, but it did the same thing. Look at the top two cards. Keep one, put the other one at the bottom. And it's actually going to be getting reprinted again pretty soon. It was just announced like yesterday, I think, or a couple days ago. With a Drac Cloak. I forget the name of the new ability, but it's still the same thing. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Keep one and put the other one at the bottom. So we're going to be getting some more Pokemon with drawing abilities. Oh yeah, and another Silhouette Energy card. We got the Steelix there. Um, I don't recognize that tower, though. I know it's from one of the cities in the video game, but I don't remember which one. Probably the Radio Tower, which would be in Goldenrod City, I think? I don't remember. Oh, no, it could also be the Lighthouse, now that I think about it. It would make more sense for it to be the Lighthouse, because uh, Steelix was used by Jasmine in the Olivine City Gym. Which had the lighthouse. Yeah, I think that's the right one. <clears throat> it was full of these little Pokemon um, bits of trivia. That's never going to help me in real life. <laughs> but that's, that's what I decided to fill my head with. With random Pokemon facts. Okay, I'm hurrying up. I'm almost done. Done more than half the deck already. Then open up one more booster and then call it a day. Oh, wait, never mind. There's Ampharos. There's the lighthouse. Oh, so what was the other one? Where's the Steelix again? Okay, so that one's obviously the lighthouse. 
So maybe this one was the the radio tower in Goldenrod City. Huh, okay. It's a lot of towers in um, Pokemon Gold and Silver because they also had the... What's it called? The, the Tin Tower and the Brass Tower where Lugia and Ho-Oh used to be. <clears throat> Here's Dragonite. This Dragonite was actually really good against other SP decks. Because if it attacks into an SP Pokemon, you can deal 80 damage instead of the usual 20. And most of the basic SP Pokemon only had 80 HP. Plus it also can hit the Guard Chomp for a weakness, so you can just knock it out in one hit anyway. Here we have Dialga level X with the Poke Body Time Crystal. Turn off all other Poke Bodies in play except for SP Pokemon. So if your opponent had any Poke Bodies that were really disrupting you, like the, um, what's it called, Spiritomb, you're going to shut it off with Time Crystal so you can keep using your trainer cards. <clears throat> Another Garchomp with a really strong Dragon Rush attack. Power Spray. Professor Oak's new theory. And finally, Pokemon Collector. It's going to be the last card we're sleeving for today. And with that, we're done with 2004 through 2010. Let me just put this one away. And we're going to be opening up our final booster pack of the night. Here we go. Come on, something good. Oh, J4 says nice. Yeah, thank you. All right. Here we go. Carvana. Ekans. Turtwig. Poochiana. Iron Valiant. Sandy Shucks, Reuniclus, another Iron Valiant. Okay, I got two in a pack. Whoa! Golden Iron Leaves, nice! I guess today is the Iron Leaves Day. Where's the other one? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, I got the Secret Art and I got the Golden one. All right, and last card is another for Alligator. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right, I think we got our hits for the box. A golden iron leaves and a secret art iron leaves. And with that, I'm going to be calling it a day. Thanks, everyone, to who, uh, who joined me for today. I'll be back again next week. I'll probably be doing it on Saturday instead of Sunday next week. And, yeah, we're going to keep sleeping until we're done. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye.